You may be seated, sorry. <laughs> I gotta turn this down. I read on Google how to do it. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Your Honor. <clears throat> I hope this works. That's what they said to do. Are you talking about your phone? No. Oh, the phone. When I get a message from you guys. If you're over 50, you don't want to use traditional makeup. As we age, our skin tends to lose moisture.
I got it on my cheeks. Are you seeing Hannah's hair right now? She did exactly what she was not supposed to do. She pulled an amber heart. She has fucking chopsticks in her hair. She did the cat eyes again. I told you not to do that, Hannah. I told you not to do the cat eyes or the amber heard hair. Good job.
sorry, I feel like I'm a servant of the water. Okay, we ready for the jury? Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Yes. Yes? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes, George. They have reverb. They just cannot nail this in the year 2024. Isn't that a trip? Uh oh, she's twirling her hair already. She looks bored, and we're just getting started. I mean, yesterday it looked like she was falling asleep at the end. She needs to lose the chopsticks and the cat eyes. And she looks bored and pissed. Headphones. George is getting them. Okay. All right. Uh, you may be seated. Let's wait. We need the headphones. Can, and I just need to get set up. All right. Can you get your witness back on this? There you are. Sure. Oh. All right, who's this guy? There's Martina. That's not her actual name. I've got little pet names for these guys, though. Oh, my God. This is so funny. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You guys didn't do this in the morning before... Was it too much trouble? Good morning, Ms. Popple. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. My God, you guys. Yesterday we uh, were discussing a Mary Kay bag that was located, I think, in the prop truck. Do you remember that? Yes. <coughs> okay, so. Oh, <coughs> sorry. Um, yesterday we were discussing a Mary Kay bag that was located in the prop truck. Do you recall that? Yes. So let's go ahead and continue there. Um, um, Are they unaware I of this? Showing, showing you. This ain't me. 
what what we've marked as states exhibit 44a do you recognize this yes and what is this a photo of? this is imagine a enduring their the level of inadequacy for 20 years um, that's me um, what are these over here on the right oh my god those are spent blank rounds. it's not court tv it's not me they're reverbing hard and what are we looking at here this oh, my god. oh i'm sorry oh i'm sorry this one is uh 44B. 44B. I apologize. Thank you. No yeah. Thank you. Um, this is an overall view of what's inside that Mary Kay bag. Okay. And so were there things underneath these boxes? Yes. And, and what was underneath the boxes? Um, I believe there were additional rounds underneath those boxes. Okay. And uh, do you know what we're looking at here on the side? This is the outside pocket of that Mary Kay bag. Okay, and I'm sorry, this is States Exhibit 45. Maybe I need another cup of coffee. Um, I'm showing you States Exhibit 46. Do you recognize this? Yes. And what's that? This is the inside of that bag once those uh, ammunition boxes were removed, uh, where you can see loose rounds. All right, thank you. And States Exhibit, <clears throat> excuse me, 47. <clears throat> what are we looking at here? This is the middle portion of that bag. Okay. And do you recognize States Exhibit 48? Yes. And what is this? This is a box of ammunition marked as dummy rounds 45 LC that was removed from that Mary Kay bag. And States Exhibit 48A, do you recognize this? Yes. And what are these? This is the foam insert containing dummy rounds that was removed from that box. And how many rounds uh, altogether, if you recall, were in there? 17. Okay, thank you. States Exhibit 49, do you recognize that? These are those same rounds removed from the foam insert and laid out. Okay. And what's the, the round that you have there by itself up, uh, up at the top? Uh, that round that's moved sideways uh, posted a concern at first because it was not making any noise with ball bearings inside like the rest of the rounds were. Is this the same Dentix round that we admitted into evidence yesterday? It is not. It is not. Okay. Uh, th this is just uh, a round that was in that box that didn't shake? Correct. Okay. And, and did you do anything with that round? We sent that round to the FBI because it was of concern and their determination was that the ball bearings were stuck inside of it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> that was the reason it wouldn't rattle? Correct. Okay. Um, States Exhibit 50. What are we looking at here? This is an ammunition box of uh, marked as 3840 dummies that was removed from the prop truck. And are all of the rounds in that styrofoam insert 3840 dummies? No. Uh, what other calibers in there? Some of them are uh, 4440s. All right. Uh, any 45 uh, Colt rounds in there? No, I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, States Exhibit 51, uh, what are we looking at here? This is a close-up of those same rounds. Okay, and we can kind of see the head stamp there, can you see that? Yes. Uh, States Exhibit 52, what's this? These are those same rounds uh, laid out. And the rounds over on the right hand side, um, what are those? The rounds that are uh, over on that side that are laid sideways, uh, those are the uh, 3840 rounds. These are the 3840s? Uh, I apologize, let me refer to my report. Sure. No, I'm sorry, those are the uh, 4440s. 
and the the chrome and shiny brass uh, that we're looking at here on the left. What what caliber are those? Those are the 3840s. Okay, great. In terms of the um, 4440s here on the right, do all of the 4440s that you have dummy rounds that you have in evidence? Do they all have that same um, uh, projectile that we can see here? Yes. And is that projectile um, dissimilar than the projectile of the live rounds? Yes. States Exhibit 53, um, what's this? These are the rounds that were provided to Detective Hancock um, from Hannah Gutierrez during her interview. Okay. And can you, were they all dummy rounds? Yes. And uh, the five on the left, do they shake? No. Uh, the one on the right, does it rattle? Yes. Rattle rather than shake, I apologize. States Exhibit 54, what are we looking at here? This is the close-up of the projectile that was recovered from Joel Souza's shoulder. Okay. And just to be clear, this is the only projectile that was, um, that, that was taken into evidence um, from, presumably from the injuries of the victims. Correct. Okay. States Exhibit 55. What's this? This was a bag of spent casings that was located inside the Mary Kay bag. And States Exhibit 56. These are those same casings laid out. And I see that you have some separated up here on the top left. Do you see those? Yes. I'm going to move to States Exhibit 57. What's this? This is a close-up of those uh, same rounds. The casings? Casings, yes. <clears throat> Um, all four of these spent casings, are they all 45 long Colt or yeah. 45 Colt? Yes. And are they all Starline brass casings? Yes. <clears throat> um, it would appear that they all have silver primers? Yes. Um, are these casings basically identical to the casing that was taken from, from the scene and sent to the FBI? Your Honor, I'm going to object on the leading, and if it can be rephrased so it's not leading. Sure. Um, did you find any spent casings on the prop cart? Yes. How many? One. And can you tell us what that one looks like as compared to what we're looking at here in States 57? Yes, the casing that was located on the cart is a silver primer and states 45 Colt with a, the Starline brass logo. All right, thank you. States Exhibit 58, do you know what we're looking at here? Yes. And what is this? This was a shirt collected from the scene that was marked as item 18. Uh, do you know which of the victims this belonged to? I believe this was Joel Souza's uh, shirt. Okay. States Exhibit 59, do you recognize that? This was that same shirt, uh, just from the opposite of you. And let me, let me stop you there. I'm going to go back to States Exhibit uh, 58, um, and I'm going to blow it up here. Do you, uh, do you see here where it says marker 18? Yes. What does that mean to you? Uh, what that correlates with is what I marked it with our 
crime scene evidence markers on scene. So it was marked on scene with a yellow marker that stated as 18. Okay. States Exhibit 59. Um, what writing do you have here? I have it as a uh, from Med 60. Okay, so I'm going to ask you again. Um, I think you indicated that this was the same shirt that was in 59, is it? Or I'm sorry, 58. Uh, it is not. I apologize. Okay. Um, so let's move to States Exhibit 60. Do you recognize that? Yes. And uh, what are we looking at here? This is the, the shirt collected from Med 60, which was the ambulance uh, from a viewpoint of it laid completely out. And uh, who, who was wearing this shirt on the day of the incident? I believe this shirt belonged to Helena Hutchins. All right, thank you. I believe and again. <clears throat> there she goes with her I believe instead of looking it up to definitively say. Evidence, uh, but States Exhibit 61, uh, do you recognize? Do you want to receive beautiful crystals every month without breaking the bank? I know what you're thinking. It must be. And can you tell us where you took the photo and why? This is the inside of Lieutenant Benavidez's vehicle where the two boxes of ammunition that were handed to him were secured. States Exhibit 62, what's that? This is a close up on those ammunition boxes. And in States Exhibit 62, can you uh, clearly see that label? Yes. Can you tell us what the label says? 45 Long Colt Dummies, JS. And when you say JS, you're referring to those small letters in the center? Yes. All right. And States Exhibit 63, what's this? This is that same box. Um, only where was this photo taken? This was uh, in my office, in my processing room. Okay. States Exhibit 64. This is the inside of that box. And this round here, um, we may have already discussed it. Was this round sent to the FBI? Yes. <clears throat> was it determined to be a live round? Yes. States Exhibit 65, what's this? These are those same rounds removed from the foam insert and laid out. Okay. And if you know, and if you need me to bounce back to the previous photo, I'm happy to. From looking at this, do you know which of these is that live round? The live round in this case would be next to all of the rounds that have the hole drilled through the side. Here? Yes. Let's talk about that. I want to make sure when it, let me ask you this, when you took the rounds out of the styrofoam insert and you lined them up, did you line them up in the same order that they were in the styrofoam insert? No. Okay. Why did you put these five at the bottom by themselves? because they were a different type of round. Okay, and so how are these five over here on the left different than the rest of the rounds from the box? So they have the hole drilled through the side. Um, all five of them? Uh, those four and then the one on the end would be the live round. Okay, this one right here? Yes. Alrighty, thank you. Um, States Exhibit 70, well let me, let me, let me stop for a second. Uh, I think you testified yesterday that you participated in a search warrant uh, at PDQ Props, is that correct? Yes. And did you collect any live ammunition from PDQ Props? Yes. Okay. Um, and let's turn to States Exhibit 70. Do you recognize this? Yes. And what is this? This was a box of ammunition that was recovered from PDQ Props. A box of ammunition? Yes. Was it live or dummy or blank? Only live ammunition was collected from PDQ props. Okay. Um, when you were there, 
Were, were, were there other types of ammunition there also? Yes. Okay. Um, States Exhibit 71, what are we looking at here? This is the live ammunition that was recovered from PDQ Props. And this live ammunition that was recovered from PDQ Props, uh, is it visibly different than the live rounds that were found on the movie set? Yes. And how is it visibly different? So there were different types of live ammunition collected from PDQ, um, including different stamps on that am ammunition. And let me ask you this, the, the projectile shape, uh, is the projectile shape um, different in these that, than in the rounds that were found on, on set? Yes. States Exhibit 72, what are we looking at here? So this is a close-up of some of that live ammunition. And um, can you tell us what color of primers the live ammunition from PDQ Props has? Uh, this ammunition that we're looking at now had brass. Okay. And that's, <clears throat> is that different than the live rounds that were found on set? Yes. Did you bring a, another um, piece of physical evidence with you at my request? Yes, I did. If you can help me. I hope that bitch fucking refers to her reports and refers to shit so she'll say it with certainty because it's not statistical correlation. You know this stuff. Ms. Popple, do you recall uh, yesterday when we discussed States Exhibit 79? Yes. And remind us what State's Exhibit 79 is. This was a live round that was deconstructed by the FBI. And where did this live round come from? Um, if I can see the label on it, I apologize. Um, so this live round originated from the box that was handed to Lieutenant Benavides. Okay, and that's... Uh... That's the, the box that just has the one live round in it that we looked at the photo of? Yes, with the silver primer. Oh, I'm not connected anymore. Okay, and that would have been State's Exhibit 64, for the record, is what we're referring to. Yes. And uh, what you brought me today, State's Exhibit 91. Let me try to find 
trying to get it out of the... Uh, can you tell us what we're looking at here? This was... Oh, let, me, let me back it up for just a second so we can see more. Okay. This was a round collected from PDQ that was then sent to the FBI and the FBI deconstructed it. Okay. Well, what, what was the purpose behind sending the live rounds from the set and the live rounds from PDQ to the FBI? They did an analysis of the gunpowder components in both rounds. Okay, great. So what we just saw in States Exhibit 79 uh, this is similar, do you agree? It has a casing and a projectile and a container of gunpowder. Yes. Um, can you see the, uh, the gunpowder that, that I've zoomed in on there? Yes. And does that look to be the same just visibly from, from just looking at it? No, does that... I'm not joking. I'm, I'm not quite sure what the way the way you're um she's phrasing it yes it just i guess it, it's okay it, sometimes it sounds leading to me but it's okay we just go for it all right thank you um is this different than than the other exhibit the gunpowder yes okay it looks different right yes thank you Give me just one moment to review my notes. And just for completeness, you do, do you also have a, a, a large amount of blank rounds in evidence? Yes. Um, how many blank rounds do you think you have in evidence? I would say probably close to a thousand. And approximately how many gun belts do you have in evidence? I believe three. And approximately how many guns do you have in evidence? Uh, around 15 or 16. And those are real functioning firearms? Yes. Bear with me. Good time to get coffee, maybe. I'll pass the witness. Thank you. Cross exam? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, come back. Okay, they got the big dog on her. He's good. He's good. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Now, I want to talk to you first about your training and your job and, and what you've been trained on as a crime scene technician. Uh, can you tell the jury a little bit about your training? Um, yes, I have my bachelor's degree in forensics. Uh, I've had over a thousand additional hours of in-classroom training. Um, over various different uh, forensic areas, such as uh, blood pattern analysis, uh, latent print analysis, um, crime scene reconstruction, those kinds of areas. Okay, and has that included firearm and ammunition training and, and determining the difference between types of ammunition? Uh, not that specific, no. Okay, so have, what what is the scope of your training you've had on determining different types of ammunition? I mean, are you specifically referring to? Calibers, uh, 4440, 38, 45, you've been trained on recognizing the differences? That I have, yes. Okay, and how about recognizing the differences between dummy rounds, 
blanks and live rounds. I have not been to that type of training, no. Okay. So your testimony earlier when you were talking about the dummy rounds and the various measurements and that, you have not been trained in that area? No. Okay. Now, part of your training in terms of verifying that a round is either a dummy or a live round is you need to send that to the FBI lab for confirmation. Would you agree with that? Yes. Because uh, some of the dummy rounds appear like live rounds. They look like live rounds, correct? Yes. In fact, the round that came out of the box we saw earlier that did not shake, you sent that off to the FBI lab because you wanted to confirm what that was, correct? Yes. And part of the thing the FBI does is they take apart the round and they determine if it has powder in it. Is that right? Yes. And when they do that, that can that tells them basically if it's a live round or a dummy. Do you agree with that? Yes. So would you also agree in your training that you've never been taught that you can eyeball a dummy and determine if it's a dummy or a live, or eyeball a round and determine if it's a dummy or live? Uh, no, I've not been trained in that area. Okay. And, and you would also agree with me that you can't look at a picture of a round and determine necessarily if it's a dummy or, or alive? I would disagree with that. And, and why would you disagree? Uh, the rounds that have holes drilled into the side of them or the primers removed appear to visibly be dummy rounds. And those do. Now how about the rounds that don't shake, don't have a hole in them, and you're looking at that. You can't tell just by looking at it that's live or dummy, correct? Correct. And that's why you sent that one off to the lab again, right? Yes. Now, I want to show you what's been marked as uh, defense I. Now, I'll show counsel. She's so defensive. It's so weird. But, you know, that's how woke are. She was another one of those diversity hires I talked about yesterday. I just know this state so well. Oh, I have no idea I moved to the to the desert southwest from the Midwest. Just kidding. But she she looks like a Midwesterner. Fly on the wall, man. Oh, my God. I think we're going to call the defense attorney Pitbull. We don't need to name the witnesses, okay, though. Uh, I am going to approach and see if you recognize this photo that we've just been talking about. I'm not going to introduce it. I'm not sure. Sure. Uh, and this is defense I. If you could take a look at that. Do you, uh, ma'am, do you recognize that photo? I do not. Okay. And, and so you didn't take that photo? No. Okay. What is in that? I know we're not going to move to introduce it, but what is in this picture? Uh, it appeared. Hang on, I'm going to object. She's never seen the picture before. Uh, she didn't take the picture. I don't think she can answer that question without it being completely speculative. And I'm just asking her to identify it. Uh, what, what is it? Not to go into detail, but what is it? Just for the record. It's a picture. Right. I'm just She's, asking for I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Bowles. Since, since you're across, can't you just lead her in that question? And I, then, I can. And we don't get sure. Out I just case. wanted her to say it. It yeah, should take it outside. This <laughs> is a picture with rounds in it in a box? Yes. Okay. And if I could have that back. Can I have my damn picture back? <laughs> <laughs> I want my picture. Okay, ma'am. Side versus dummy rounds. You would also agree with me that you have not been trained on the shininess of rounds and how that 
you can't tell a, a dummy or a lie from their shininess, right? Or your head. Oh, my God. And, Are you a dummy? Uh, yesterday, there was some talk about patine uh, or a patina on some of the rounds. Do you remember that? Patina. <laughs> and, and actually, what that is is just oxidation on the round case, correct? Yes. Patine. So, in other words, when a round sits around for a long enough, oxygen interacts with the metal and it's just going to turn a little color, correct? Yes. And because oxygen does that to the outside of the round, you don't know whether that may, it, it doesn't matter whether it, the, there's a patina as to whether it's live or a dummy, correct? Correct. Because they have the same cases. Yes. Okay. Um, now, with regard to the FBI, there were several things that were sent to the FBI you testified yesterday for testing, correct? Yes. And there was DNA testing uh, requested on the revolver that was used by Mr. Baldwin, correct? Yes. And you knew that that was submitted? Yes. Now, yesterday you talked about somebody told you at the FBI that the live rounds could not be tested for DNA. You remember that? Yes. Who did you talk to specifically? I don't recall who I specifically spoke to at the lab. Okay. Did you make that call? To not send them? No, did you make the call to the FBI personally? Yes, I did, okay. along with uh, their representative for our area, who was uh, Agent Cortez. Cortez, uh, okay. Now, were you aware that, that we had requested those rounds, fingerprints and DNA be taken from them? That you requested it? Yes. No. Okay, you were never told that? No. Okay. And you were, you're also aware that those live rounds were never tested for their fingerprints. I was not aware of that. I, it was my understanding that they were tested for fingerprints. Well, then you're not aware of it. I asked Detective Hancock to do that and it wasn't done. You're not aware of that? Objection to the former question. He's asking her to speculate. Well, How does she know what he says to Detective he's, Hancock? He's not asking her to speculate, but um, she's answering your question about whether you are aware. I don't know if this, this, I think you can follow up about why, you know, what, what's the purpose of asking this witness about those things? Yes. And, and yesterday you testified that these, these live rounds have been sent for fingerprints. That was my understanding. But that, you, you didn't talk to Detective Hancock to see that she didn't do that? Uh, it's my understanding that it got done. <laughs> Where's the report on that? The FBI report on that? Yes. I would assume that the FBI would have it. Okay. And are you familiar with that report in Mr. Ziegler's report? I am not. Okay. So you haven't read that recently? Not recently, no. Okay. okay. So you don't, you don't have first-hand knowledge that, that those live rounds were tested for fingerprints, correct? Correct. So you were, you're just going on an assumption. It was, what you she does that. The information that I had from the lab. She's like the anti-scientist. I'm a fucking counselor and I'm more scientific than she I'm is. Sorry, but you know, I'm sorry, we're science you. people. I'm sorry, but still, okay. oh. I don't have like CSI sorry. in my oh, title. Sorry, yeah. Okay, so again, that was just what you, you thought, but it, it wasn't. Anyway, we'll get into that with Detective Hancock. Okay. With regard to um, your role as a crime scene technician, you also took a series of photos of different scenes, correct? Yes. And that included the uh, church? Yes. And th that included the prop truck? Yes. And that included Seth Kinney's business PDQ, correct? Yes. Okay. With regard to the prop truck, do you re recall when that search warrant occurred? Uh, for the prop truck yes. took place on October 27th. Okay. And when did the search of Seth Kenny's PDQ business take place? November 30th. Wow. And then the incident on set, the shooting on set, that occurred October 21st, correct? Yes. Okay. So October 21st, the prop truck is searched six days later. Is that correct? Yes. And then Seth Kinney's place is not searched for over a month, correct? Yes. Yes, in so typical New Mexico during fashion. during that month period, 
you have no idea whether Mr. Kenny um, disposed of grounds or got rid of grounds. You have no idea whether that that, that happened. Oh my God! No. Okay. No. And were you aware that Mr. Kenny had received rounds from the set of Yellowstone 1883? Yes. Because. This pan is proven to perform. Over 90,000 of our pans can be found delivering on at the time of the search warrant, correct? No. That, that canister was not empty? The box marked Live Ammo 1883 is the only area we found live rounds. Okay. Did he not have any other live rounds in that shop? I don't believe so, no. Because there were, and we'll show pictures in a little bit, but there were tons of ammunition boxes, correct? Yes. Okay. So did you search all of those boxes? Did you look into all those boxes? I believe so, yes. Every one of them? I, I can't be certain. Okay. Because there's a lot of them. You remember yes. that? She yeah. didn't do her due diligence. Um, did you, in fact, just take Seth Kenny's word on what was live and what was not? Mm -hmm. No, I know that boxes were dug through and it was a time consuming process. Yeah, it is time now, consuming. You guys cut corners. You didn't seize all of the rounds from that um, 1883 can, did you? I collected the live rounds that were in the box marked 1883 that were 45 Colt. Were, did you get all, all the 45 rounds from that canister? Yes, all of the 45 rounds. Okay. And did you ask him whether he had gotten rid of some of the rounds or used some of the rounds prior to you all getting there for the search? I did not interview Seth Kenny. Okay. So you don't know the answer to that? No. Okay. Now, earlier, you showed a, a picture of the Mary Kay bag. Do you remember that? Yes. And there was a box inside it with blue writing that we saw do you recall that yes and it said something like dummy rounds else 45 lc yes and you know that that's seth kenny's box correct i yes i know okay and that box was found in the prop truck yes okay uh now you're not aware whether sarah zachary may have taken anything from the prop cart to the prop truck or are you i do not know okay so if she had removed anything from the prop cart and taken it to the prop truck, you would not know that. Is that what you're telling the jury? Correct. So Seth Kenny's box, you have no idea whether that was on the prop cart, but it was moved to the prop truck, do you? No. Now, are you aware that you, you uh, responded to the scene at, at the time of the shooting, right? Right after the shooting? Yes. How long did it take you to get there after? Uh, it took me several minutes. Uh, we had a meeting in our criminal investigations division first before we all headed out to the scene. How long did it take you after those several minutes to get to the scene? Uh, I do not recall. Okay. Was it 30 minutes? Was it an hour? How it long was the drive? Was I would say 30 minutes at most. Okay. So when you got You're not there, very you perceptive for a scientist. Yes. At what time, how, how long after, if you know, did those sheriffs report after the shooting? How long did it take for them to get there? I do not know. Okay. I do not know anything. At the she time sounds like she's there, from the Midwest. Did you see whether Mr. Baldwin was segregated in a vehicle? I don't recall. I don't know nothing. Did you see that Miss Gutierrez was, though? Uh, yes, I recall her being in the vehicle. Do you recall seeing Alec Baldwin talking on his cell phone and just walking around? Uh, no, I don't recall that. No, but I've seen the you footage. Seen pictures like that or video or anything like that? Uh, in the following days in media, yes. yes. Sure. Seen him on the phone. Yes, yes. So, of so course. Right now, you can tell the jury he was not segregated. Uh, no, I do not know. no. Okay. He was influencing everyone. He no. had his attorney on site. With regard to... Your work on set that day, you took pictures when you responded to the shooting. Did you do any interviews, anything like that? No, I do not interview. 
okay? And your, your job at that time as a crime scene technician is to secure the scene, secure the evidence. Would that be fair? Yes. Part of your goal in securing the evidence is to make sure that you get it right, you get the chain of custody right, and you make sure that's logged, is that right? Yes. Why is the chain of custody so important? The chain of custody is essentially the tracking of where the item originated from to who has possession of it now and everything in between. Okay, and if there is a break in the chain of custody, that's a problem for you in terms of verifying that evidence, correct? Yes. Now, if before you got there, Miss Zachary had thrown rounds away and, or, and she had taken items from the prop cart to the prop truck, that could cause problems with the chain of custody, correct? Well, I, if someone were to remove evidence from a scene, it wouldn't just cause problems for chain of custody, it would cause problems because we no longer have that evidence. Correct. In fact, if you don't have the evidence, it's lost. That's a serious problem in a case like this, correct? Yes. And this is a uh, death investigation. So you would ideally want all of the evidence that might be relevant for a jury to see later, correct? Yes. Now, are you aware here that, that Ms. Zachary actually threw those rounds away? Uh, beyond my scope of knowledge. Okay. And again, we're, we're talking about those getting thrown away. But now let's talk about if items were taken from that prop cart to the prop truck before you got there, would you agree that breaks the chain of custody? It disturbs the scene. Would you agree with that? Yes. So in other words, when you get there and you take pictures of the prop cart, you wouldn't know if that's how it looked at the time of the shooting, would you? No. And um, we saw a picture of those boxes that went into Deputy Benavidez's truck. Do you recall that? Yes. Now, um, later on, I know you put them back in the cart to take pictures, correct? Yes. So... And I know you weren't intending to do something, but when you placed them back, you have no idea if that was where they were before. That was not the reasoning behind placing them into the scene. I understand, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say your reasoning a certain way. I'm just saying that you did not know when you placed them back for a picture that that's exactly where they were before. Correct. So when the jury looks at a picture of the prop cart now, they don't know if that's where those were at the time of the shooting. Now, that's not your fault. I'm just saying that that's a fact, correct? Correct. She's so and, defensive he had to uh, say that to defuse her. Evidence, when you're trying to, as a crime scene technician, you don't want people, for example, to reach across the uh, crime scene tape and either grab evidence or put, put evidence on a cart. Exactly. Correct. Now, similarly, you would not want, as a crime scene technician, for an officer to handle a weapon with his bare hand. That wouldn't be ideal, would it? No. And in fact, you're trying to get DNA later and fingerprints, but did you see the uh, camera of the deputy Benavides that handled that ra weapon with his bare hand? Yes. Okay, and, and again, that's not ideal, is it? No. Okay. Um, in terms of, in terms of that, um, those rounds, you talked about the box, and you talked about different boxes that were found in that day, correct? Yes. Now, you have no idea whether Miss Zachary or Miss Gutierrez-Reed used those rounds on a day and then put them back in a different box, do you? No. So if you, for example, if these rounds were used the day before and they were changed out into a different box, you would have no way of knowing that, would you? No. Sarah so Zachary words, is the props head. She's the head that Hannah answers box, to. From that box. You really have no idea where those rounds originated from. Which box do you? My statements for, for where they originated at that time. Yes, yeah, so that was just that day. But Why are you red? Is, you do not know if three days before I don't like her at all. These rounds were in that box, and these rounds were in that box. Is that fair? Yes. Just tell the damn truth and you ain't got no damn fucking red faces to make and weird ass faces and shit. No, I, I'm not, um, well, 
In other news, Beauty is back. Thank you, Beauty. She's right behind Pitbull. I do not know. Okay. So when you said they were handed to him, you really didn't know that? No, that was the information that I was given. Okay. But again, the, the lapel cam, um, everybody could watch it and see it, but, but for example, it doesn't look like anybody handed it to him. Um, but you haven't seen it? I'll just object to the formal question. She's indicated that, that I don't think she knows. So. No, you're right. No, she's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I'll, I'll move forward on that. Um, now, I do want to show you some pictures that we're going to label, uh, and I think by stipulation that we would uh, ask these to be introduced. And if it's possible, if Mr. Bullion could. Uh, Jane through. Booyah. Jane through what? Uh, J through M. M as in Mary? Uh, M as in Nancy. Gotcha. All right, so uh, they're moving for the admission. Do you have any objection? I don't have any objection uh, as long as uh, they are certain that these are photos that Ms. Popple took. Got lots of bald heads in the house. That's a, a kind of a popular thing in New Mexico for men who are losing their hair. And Hannah, lose the fucking roses on your fucking jacket. Just keep it straight, you know? Lose the cat eye, lose the fucking chopstick, stop doing amber hard shit, you know? We wouldn't be here if you had checked the weapon. Bottom line, none of this matters. You didn't check the weapon. It was many factors and many players, and they should all be held to account. Because each step in that chain caused Helena's demise and Joel's injury. Anyway, is this Fancy coming up here? Fancy's coming! I don't know what they're doing. No, that's not fancy. All right. <coughs> J through N is admitted to the series of photos. You may uh, publish. Thank you, Your Honor, and we'll try to move fairly quickly through this. I actually don't know where Fancy is today. I'm getting them. <laughs> Fancy's over on the on the other side. Which one do you want to start with? Okay. The prosecution. Start with the photos from the Seth Kenny business. PDQ props. Yes, but we don't want to show them all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're just going to kind of Seth Kenny is the owner of PDQ okay. Props. And then, can I first ask you, did you say that you had taken uh, some of these photos or all of these photos? Yes, all of these photos. Okay. And again, this is from the search warrant of Seth Kenny's business in yep. November? Okay. Yes. And I want to say... At uh, the end of November. this shot? Um, this is the back alley entrance into the building. Okay. Next. Uh, that... Same alley entrance. Okay. Excuse me, can you say on the record which exhibit? It's J. They're, they're, putting, they're en massing things into a J. All right. Mr. Bullion, when you switch to K, yeah. let us know. Yeah. Yes. When you switch to K, let us know. Yeah. You can't get those pictures any bigger just out of curiosity? I mean, it's up to you. But yes, can we make those a little bigger, Mr. Bullion, if you just zoom in? And can we spend like half the hearing on technical issues? Okay. Thanks. Hey, Ma'am, did you say what, what that one was? Uh, this is an, another angle from that back alley. Okay, next. 
again, a different angle from the back alley. Uh, the gate leading into the back alley. Does this how how this organized. This, one too. Uh, this is how this looked when you went in? Yes. Does that appear to be disorganized? Yes. Okay. I would, and again, this one is very disorganized? Yes. Okay. Person's a hoarder. It's all in the family, you know. What is this picture? That's why you don't keep shit on um, the this family. This is facing the entrance from where we came in. Again, there's stuff everywhere. You agree with that? Yes. Okay. The next one. Okay. What is what is that one? I believe this was a look into a closet. Okay. And is there uh, pizza boxes there? Yes. Did you know if he lived here too, Seth Kenny? I do not. Okay. And go to the next. All right, and is that the one, Mr. Bling, with the rounds? If you can show that. Okay, what are what are these we're seeing? These were boxes and boxes of ammunition. And this is what I was kind of mentioning earlier. There was a lot of these, correct? Yes. Okay, and it, and there was other places where these were. Okay, here are these more boxes. Yes. And are these all different kinds of ammunition? I believe so. Yes. Okay. And again. <laughs> Uh, I think you said you couldn't recall whether you all went through all those boxes. Uh, no, I could not recall. Okay. And, and keep going. Okay, and we're flipping kind of quickly, but what is this uh, this machine? I believe this was a vice that was sitting on a counter. Okay. Okay. And then more ammo boxes? Yes. Now, zoom in on this. Uh, did you see any of them with the JS? Uh, yes. Okay. And you know, that's a fairly common box. Uh, have you seen that in Seth Kenny's business as well? Uh, yes. Okay. Now these ammo boxes in general, you're aware, aren't you, that they can be purchased off the internet for 25 or 10 bucks? Uh, I don't know that. So. Okay. I mean, but these are standard little white boxes. They're all over the place. Would you, are you aware of that? That they're standard white boxes? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> And they, I mean, you, you, or you're familiar with these, aren't you, in your job? You with, see these type of boxes? I see ammo boxes, not necessarily all white ones with certain stamps on them. Okay, well, how often do you see JS? Uh, not a lot. Okay, <laughs> but you do see them from time to time. Not that I recall. Okay, well, there's a lot there. Well, yes, in uh, this case, uh, there were a lot of JS boxes, but okay. in my seven years crime scene tech, I haven't seen a lot of JS boxes. Do you know what JS is? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Next one. And again, we got probably jack shit for her knowledge 22. base. These are mm -hmm. more ammo, right? Yes. Okay. Next. Okay. Seven, JS. seven, seven. Is that the JS there? Yes. Okay. If, if you can move forward. Okay, and, and what are these? These are spent casings. Do you see the um, the primer, how it's dented? Yes. What is the significance of that? That means that this round has been fired, so a firing pin has created that indent in this casing. Are you aware that there's a, a thing where a, a primer can be slightly dented, and then if it was struck again, it could go off? Are you aware of that? Um, no, I'm not sure what you're referring to. If a hammer hits a primer and it doesn't strike it hard enough, it can create a small indentation or dent in that, correct? Um, I think this is pretty far outside her scope of expertise, and we've got plenty of other ways. That's awesome. Sure, That's exactly his point. Bam! You walked right into it, bitch! Oh, oh he's good. Mr. Bullion? He's good. And then again, what are... Just, uh... Can you give the jury just an idea of what, what I these fucking are? love that. Yes. The, 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 the yeah. prosecution is unaware that he did that. So they're dumb. Gray tub. Yes. They're the real dummy round. <laughs> what? And what are some of these pictures? Uh, this was the front room area. Okay. Again, is that more ammo boxes in this this particular picture? Yes. Okay. 
Okay, and again, is that a JS notation? Yes. Okay. How is it allowed that a supplier of ammunition would be so disorganized and have a legal business? Are there no inspections? Go back uh, one. Is that a gun gun belt? Yes. Okay. And go forward. And again, more ammo? Yes. Okay. And we've seen enough of those. If, uh, unless you have anything in particular, but that's... Uh, we, He's all made my points. Church pictures. Oh, is that K now? Uh, there's a couple. Okay, go ahead. Put those up. We're still in J. Okay, what is this picture? This was a box that was located marked Live Ammo 1883. And, and again, that was what we talked about earlier? Yes. That's, okay. And what is what is this one? Uh, this is an overview of where that box was located. Okay. And, and finally, what is what is this one? This is what was inside of that box. Okay. And there's uh, several in that uh, live ammo. There's several boxes here, correct? Yes. What was that? What What were those that said lead? I don't recall. Okay. You don't recall what was inside those? Uh, no. Okay. They're labeled of various types. Did you go through all those? Yes. But you can't tell the jury today what, what was in them? I don't recall what was in them. Then look at your notes, you dumb bitch. If you processed them, you took okay, fucking notes. Is that right? That's not the scientific what are those method. Those I are, know it. I believe some of them were uh, live 45 rounds. Okay, were those collected? Yes. Okay. And how about these? This was a close-up of what was in that box marked uh, 45 LC. Okay. And do you know what is in this picture? Uh, this was a, a green ammunition box that was located. Okay. And these appear to be more dummy rounds, is that right? Yes. Okay, if we can move to uh, K. We need to fire this bitch. Is there going to be a, 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 some kind of demarcation so that we know which is J, which is K? Uh, yes, uh, just we kidding. Go back and make sure that that's demarcated. Okay. We'll do that. This whole thing is a joke, man. Not well, cool. Well, um, we're finding that. I have a couple more questions. The round you talked about in government or states forty nine earlier that had um, ball bearings in it that didn't shake or, or apparently were stuck inside. Do you recall that? Yes. And that was the one that you sent off to the FBI lab. Yes. So that would have been a round potentially on set that didn't rattle. Yes. And that. So that would have been a round potentially on set that did not rattle, correct? Yes. But um, you had to send that off to the FBI lab for confirmation to determine that, correct? Yes. And that's not something either Miss Zachary or Miss Gutierrez Reed had the luxury of on the set, did they? No. Okay. Uh, we also heard um, yesterday Miss Morrissey shook a round into the microphone. You remember that? Yes. And asked everybody if they could hear it? Yes. Again, that's not something Miss Zachary or, or Miss Gutierrez Reed had the luxury of on set, did they? Of rattling around? Of having a microphone so they can rattle it and have everybody hear on a microphone. No, they didn't have a microphone then. Okay. okay, do you have the church pictures ready? Yeah. Okay. Can we put those up? Now, can you just quickly tell us kind of what we're looking at here? Is this David Hall's? No living being should ever eat processed food for every single meal of their life. Good, real food is simple. It looks like food, it smells like food. It's what dogs are supposed to be eating. We really don't want people to think of feeding food like ours as spoiling their dogs. It's amazing to me how many people write in about their dogs changing for the better. The farmer's dog is just our way to help people take care of them.
um, another angle of what's outside the church. Do you know what the card is that we just saw? I'm not sure what you're referring to. The card that's in the photo now? Yeah, it's just we went by it. If you could go, you know, go the other way. This one. Uh, that was one of multiple equipment carts that was located outside. And when you say equipment carts, were these, so these were on set, productions carts when you got there? Yes. Okay, keep going. And what is that, that, that big structure in the back of that photo? Uh, are you talking about the small structure or are you talking about the white structure? The white structure. I believe that was the uh, prop truck. Okay. And do you see that that appears to be outside of the crime scene tape? Yes. Okay. Okay, and these are more photos of the church, is that right? Yes. Okay. What is the next? Oh, the prop truck. Okay, can we put those up? And this prop truck search was this, uh, October 27th, correct? Yes. Okay. Mr. Billion, what is the letter? Uh, this one is M. M is in Mary. Okay, just a minute. Did we finish K and L or? Yes. Okay, well, you. All right, so we went into K. You didn't tell us when, when we went into L. I apologize, Your Honor, all the church photos were L that we just saw. All right. Well, let's make sure that when you send them to the jury, they have them properly marked, okay? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Yes. All right. M. Now. Okay, this is M as in Mary, this series. Um, now, what is, what is this here? This is the outside of the prop truck. Okay. And move, if you can... This is the exterior and side of the truck? Yes. Okay. And what is, what is this picture of? Uh, this is the side door entrance into the truck. Okay. And this is the interior? Yes. Okay. Okay, and this is a gun belt in the interior of that truck? Yes. Okay. And what are these we're seeing now that we're zooming in? Uh, this in particular is a 45 LC ammo box. Can you also approach for a moment? Yes, Your Honor. All right, we're going to take our morning break.
please don't talk among yourselves or anyone else about the evidence received here in court. Thank you. All rise. You may be seated. Uh, as a reminder, you all need to have your badges. That's, a, you know, Barry Massey and uh, Beth Wojan went to a lot of trouble to prepare them to get you in, and um, you need them when you come in here. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. Oh my God, the guilt trip. That wasn't awkward or anything. Oh my god, we'll be back. So I'm going to stop this and play a concert in the background so that you can enjoy um, during break. And then we will resume this beautiful footage of the great seal of a great state. And we'll return after the break. 10 minute break.
Sweetwater helps music makers make more music. How? Less time waiting, more time playing. Thanks to our fast free shipping. Less time troubleshooting, more time fine tuning. Thanks to free tech support and endless guides. Less time looking for answers and more time getting solutions. Thanks to our expert sales engineers. Spend more time on what matters with Sweetwater. Fifty-nine years old, and I'm having more fun than I did in my thirties. I feel really good, especially since I'm not in the gym doing any kind of work.
With so many choices on Booking.com, there are so many Tina Fey's I could be. So I hired Bob. Okay, all right, I understand. And those will be labeled as well. Okay. okay, ma'am, can you see that uh, photo which is in as a Nancy one? No. You can't see it? No, oh. there's nothing on my screen. Okay. If you could please tell the jury what that is. This was a gun belt that was located in the prop truck. Okay, and N2? A different angle of that uh, gun belt. Okay, and how about N3? This is a close-up of some of the rounds that were in that belt. Okay, and you see, do you see different types of rounds in that belt in terms of the head stamps? I believe in this case, in this photo, they all look the same. Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you N4, and what is that? Uh, that's that same photo, but uh, a little clearer. It's not as blurry. Okay, and are those uh, primers, what color are those primers? Those are silver. Okay, and how about N5? This is a different area of the gun belt close-up. Okay. And it has, I see, 45 Colt rounds, is that correct? Yes. And some silver primers? Yes. Now, were any of these on N5 determined to be live? No. Okay. So these are dummy rounds with silver primers? 
Yes. Okay. How about N6? This is a different angle of that gun belt. Okay. N7? A different angle of that gun belt. And is that the same with N8? Yes. Okay. And what is N9? This is a close-up of the brand marking that was on the belt. And what is N10? Um, I believe these were the rounds that were in the belt that were removed from it. Okay. And they all have that, um, what you called yesterday, that, that patina? Yes, that darkening on the casing. Okay. And how about N11? Uh, this is those same rounds with the uh, Spain Denix round removed. And the Spain Denix round was the round that didn't shake? Correct. Okay. Okay. And N12? This is a close-up of the uh, silver primer on those rounds. Okay. How about N13? This was a box of ammunition that was taken from the prop truck. Okay. N14? A close-up of some of the writing on that box. Okay. N15? Uh, those boxes removed from the cardboard box. All right, and in 16, is, is that just one of the boxes? Yes. Okay. In 17, what, what is the significance of that photo? Uh, this was the writing on the outside of that box. And that has the JS also? Yes. Okay. And what is in 18? This is the styrofoam insert removed from that box. In 19? A close-up of a different cardboard box with ammunition from the prop truck. Okay, what is N20? This is an overall of the Mary Kay bag from the prop truck. Okay, and again, we see in the middle of that Seth Kenny's box with the writing? With the blue writing that states Dummy Rounds 45 LC. Okay. Uh, again, N21 appears to be a similar picture, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and in 22, that is just another picture of a box? Yes. Okay. And in 23? Uh, that box with the styrofoam removed, removed from it. Okay. And what is in 24? Uh, these were items taken out of the Mary Kay bag and uh, laid out. Okay, what is that um, on the top left? What is that item? Um, my apologies. Uh, your left. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I should have thought about that. It, it's, uh, it's on my left. It's at, if you, as you're looking at it up on that screen, it's the top left. Right, right above the insert. Um, I believe it was a bracket of sorts that was bent. Okay. Um, and then on the far right top, is that just a cloth of some sort? I believe that was one of the sock covers for the firearms. Okay, and can you tell the jury about that? Did they keep these firearms in a sock cover? Um, some of the firearms were kept in sock covers is what they were referred to as. Okay, and are you familiar with those, those sock co covers? Not particularly, no. Okay, I'm going to go on to N25. Again, is that the same kind of photo of the gun, sock, and then the other two items you have there? Yes. And what is the significance of the Q-tips? Uh, they were in the bag, and I was documenting everything that was inside that bag. Okay. How about N26? Again, we see an insert from a box. Is that right? Yes. Okay. N27, what is that photo? This is a close-up of the center of the Mary Kay bag. Okay. N28 is just a picture of another box. Is that right? Yes. Any significance to this particular box? Um, I took photographs of every single box of ammunition before it was opened and then after it was opened. Okay, ma'am. And that was from the prop truck? You yes. did that? Okay. And N29, again, is that Seth Kenny's box with the blue writing? Yes. Okay. N30, what is that photo? This is the inside of that box and the rounds that were inside of it. Okay. And these rounds have silver primers as well? Yes. And I think you indicated 16 were, were dummies? They were all dummies. All dummies. One was suspected life. 
One was unknown, which is why it was sent to the FBI. Okay, that was the one that didn't shake. Yes. Okay, and again, you don't know these rounds that are in this insert right now, you don't know if they were in there five days before October 21st. No. You have no way of knowing. N31, is that that same picture? Yes. Okay. And N32? These are those rounds removed from the foam and laid out for photographs. Okay. And same thing on N33? A close-up of the bottom of those rounds. Okay. And N34? I believe this is a close-up of those rounds in the box. Okay. And I have, then I have no further questions in those exhibits. And that's all the questions I have. Going back to Hannah's hair and her outfit and stuff, they're trying to make her look young, youthful, and innocent. Because I just think it's just bad choices all around. In terms of her fashion, that is. And the fact that she never checked the weapon. But those fucking chopsticks... God damn it, don't act like Amber Heard. At least she's not making dumb Amber Heard faces. Uh, Ms. Popple, you were asked a series of questions about the search of PDQ props. So I'd, I'd like to ask you some questions about that. Hang on, let me get myself situated with my notes. Get organized, New Mexico. You are never organized. You had a year to prepare for this. Give me a break. Everything is so disorganized in New Mexico. You can really feel the old territorial mentality. Especially when you work with these people, the way I have, it uh, really shows. And I just want them to know the world is watching. And I just, I again, want you to know my 20 years of working with these people was like this. Just sloppy, gaslighting. When they took a 30 minute break. PDQ props, um, did law enforcement officers assist you? Yes. How many people uh, were present, if you recall, at the search of that location? Um, myself, Detective Hancock, and Sergeant Christopher Zook. And it, uh, it looked like there was a lot of stuff in there. Is that right? Yes. Um, but what's your understanding of what kind of business PDQ is? Uh, that they provide props to movie sets. And live ammo, apparently. Do they have to have props to provide props to movie sets? I uh, don't... Uh, yes. <laughs> and that would make sense. <laughs> uh, did the entire business appear to be full of movie props? Yes. Okay. Uh, and the, the live ammunition that you found was just that one box, is that right? Yes. And when I say the one box, the gray box that had boxes in it. Yes, marked it, as 1883. And it was marked clearly as live. Yes. And that was the only live ammunition you found there. Yes. But she didn't open all the boxes, you guys. She didn't do that. 
Uh, she was sloppy. You, uh, and showed you some photos of um, ammunition that was at PDQ that had the JS on the uh, on the label. Do you recall that? The yes. jack shit, which is Did this. Did you find any forty-five long cold dummies when you were doing your search of PDQ props? Only in my brain. I don't recall. Jack shit. That's what JS stands for. Would it help you if you looked at your report? E yes. Okay, why don't you take a minute? Yeah, look at your fucking report, you dumb bitch. You dumb fucking bitch. God. You dumb bitch. Did that refresh your memory? Yes. God. Uh, there was at least a gun belt that had dummy ammunition in it. Addition to um, my brain. Other than that gun belt, did you find any boxes of 45 long Colt dummies? I believe so, yes. You do? Um, there were, you know what, I apologize, it's not specified in my report uh, if there were additional dummies specific to 45 long Colts located. Are like on set was only to find live ammunition at that point. Like every individual on set was surgery. a fucking live yes. dummy. Okay. Um, did you find any boxes, if you recall, and, and if not, because it wasn't the focus of your search, that's fine, just tell us. Did you find any boxes of ammunition that match <clears throat> the one that's on your screen? I don't recall. Um, that's karma, honey. If you were to, not that I'm going to ask you to do it now. Don't For worry. choking and if shit. If you were to uh, take some time and review all of the photos that you took at PDQ, do you think that would help you answer that question? Yes. Okay, great. So then do that. No, let's just cut some corners. And New Mexico, after all. It's my understanding, based on your cross-examination testimony, that in terms of the live ammunition, you only collected 45 caliber ammunition. Yes. Was there other caliber live ammunition? I don't believe so. Okay. You um, don't know. So the 45 long colt live ammunition that you collected that we've looked at photos of um, that, that's the only live ammunition that was there. Yes. Okay. But not definitively because you didn't check every box and you admitted to that. Uh, you were asked some questions on cross-examination, uh, about, you wouldn't know if Sarah Zachary, uh, uh, moved evidence from the prop cart to the prop truck. Do you recall that question? Yes. Um, and let me ask you, do you know whether Ms. Gutierrez uh, ever took anything out of the prop truck before it was searched? No, I do not know. I don't know if anyone did. Because that Mr. whole Bowles chain was broken. About whether you've received any training in uh, how to distinguish dummy rounds and blank rounds from live rounds. Do you recall that? Yes. And you indicated you haven't received that training. Correct. Is that right? Correct. So in your experience, are movie set crime scenes very common? No. Uh, do you have training in guns and ammunition? <clears throat> yes, I do. And are you capable of measuring things yes uh, so without specific training you are capable of measuring the six millimeter projectile or the four millimeter projectile because you can use a ruler right yes and you did that in this case yes and you ain't clever <laughs> baby you ain't he are fucking you got you earlier of distinguishing brass primers from silver primers yes are you capable of distinguishing different shaped projectiles? Yes. Don't make that smirk. 
Don't make that fucking smirk on your little caveman face. How do you tell a dummy round from a live round? She looks in the mirror. In this case in particular, uh, when a dummy, a large amount of the dummy rounds when shaken would have a rattle to it instead of having gunpowder inside of it. It, Uh Aha. So So if we shake you, you're going to rattle and roll. (laughs) What about that tells you that they're dummies and not live ammunition? Well, live ammunition has gunpowder inside of it, so you would not hear that kind of noise. Don't don't you scoff, bitch. You're fucking sloppy. Um, And the other... You ain't got no game. How are you able to, to distinguish them from the live rounds? There were holes drilled through the sides of them. Like your fucking this brain. This is rocket science, right? Right. It is. Currently to, for yes. her, she can't look through everything and write it down and look at her notes for reference. It would be too much work. She apparently went in Rome, you know, she moves here and she gets lazy and apathetic. And you, uh, Good you job. Actually, just to be safe, you sent some dummy rounds to the FBI, right? Yes. Well, then why are you here? Did any of the dummy rounds that you sent to the FBI come back as live rounds? Just her. It's arguable, though. In terms of the dummy rounds that you have in evidence, how many dummy rounds don't rattle and don't have a hole in the side? Two. Thank you. Two out of how many? 250. I was worried about that, though. There are going to be some that don't make that little sound. I think she introduced doubt and error is what I think because of her sloppy investigative work. So she is to get that smug look off her face. The reason that you were only looking for 45 caliber rounds. My understanding was that I had tunnel vision was that was the restriction of the search warrant. Mm hmm. How are you going to know, though, unless you check shit because you eyeball in it and you don't have experience caliber rounds significant and others not significant because all of the live rounds that were located on on set were 45 rounds. And to be clear, the let's talk for a moment about the uh, live ammunition that you collected from PDQ. What color were the primers? Um, there were silver and brass primers collected from PDQ. In terms of the live ammunition? Yes. And do you have photographs of the of the of the live ammunition that has silver primers? Yes, I believe I do. Okay. Can you I check mean, and okay, make I'm sure? We may talk about that. I don't she believes that everything. Yet. She doesn't check anything. Did all of the live rounds that you collected from PDQ, let me ask it this way. Did any of them look identical to the live rounds found on set? No. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. Did you look at them all? No. Oh, yes. Yes. That's all good. Okay. Thank you. Sloppy shit. The state will call Christopher Zook. Yeah, Hannah, if you just checked the fucking gun, no one would be here right now. It's your job, number one. Christopher Zook. Let me see what his role is.
Do you swear or affirm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, Your Honor. All right, go ahead. Have a seat. Talk into the microphone, please. Go ahead and state your full name for the record. Christopher Zook. And Mr. Zook, how are you currently employed? I am currently retired. And what did you, where did you retire from? The Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office. And back on October 21st, 2021, how were you employed? I was a sergeant for the Sheriff's Office in the Criminal Investigations Division. And in that capacity, did you become involved in the investigation regarding the shooting on the movie set rest? I did. Um, I want to ask you specific questions. Did you participate in a search of the prop truck? I did. And were firearms located in the prop truck? Yes. Where were they located? In a safe. Were they removed from the safe? Yes, by uh, CST or the criminal specialist uh, pop uh, Popple. The lady that yes, just left? Yes, the one that just left, yeah. Okay. She was the one that unloaded or took him out of the safe. And when she took him out of the safe, what'd she do with him? Um, so it was a large box truck that the safe was in and uh, I was standing outside of the box truck at the back of it and she would take him out and put him on the bed of the, well, the floor of the truck at the opening of the back door and then we would clear them and then take them into evidence. Okay, uh, so you were responsible for clearing the firearms. Yes. Uh, that was not Ms. Popple's job. No, well, there was a couple of us that was making sure that they were unloaded and cleared and all that stuff because we don't want a loaded firearm in our evidence locker. Sure. Um, and did you uh, come across a lever action rifle? I did. And tell us about that. The, I, do not, I do not remember the maker model of it. It was a lever action rifle. Uh, the way I was unloading the lever actions, uh, they were an old style gun. I did not know where the magazine or the tube was on that. So what I was doing is just going through the motion of the lever action and having the rounds eject. Show us what you mean when you say going through the motion of a lever action for those of us that don't know what that means. Do you mind if I sound? Sure. Okay, so a lever action rifle, it's right there by the trigger. There's just a little, oh, it's a lever. And you just rack it back and forth and it will take it from the magazine and put it into the tube. And then when the load or when the round is spent, you do it again and ejects it. And then while you're coming back, it will reload another round. Does that make sense? Yes. So you have to do the action, a lever action. And when you're doing the lever action, uh, do the rounds inside just fly out? They eject out. They're okay. supposed to. Okay. And that's what you were doing to unload it? Yes. Were you able to unload that gun? No, not all the way. I, w I believe I was able to unload at least a round or two, and then there was a round that was jammed. And do, do you know what caliber of ammunition that lever action rifle took? It was a 4440. And do you know why it was jammed? Because the round that was in it was a 45, which okay. is just like very slightly bigger. Okay. It was enough to jam the yeah, rifle? Yeah, that is correct. Okay. All right. Um, I'll pass the witness. Hi, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. So, sir, are you familiar with those types of Henry rifles? I'm not. And, and so you're not aware that you don't have to lever that to extract the rounds? I do now, but at the time I did not know that. Okay, so now you're aware that you don't have to work the lever to get those rounds out. Correct. The, on the end of the... Uh, the the tube or the magazine that I found out later on, I, we had a, uh, our, our gun expert at the sheriff's office, his name is uh, Deputy Steve Orr. I had him come into our ammunition room, which is covered in cinder blocks. So if it did go off, it, you know, people are safe. And he showed me actually at the end of the tube, there was a part where you just twist and the rounds came out. So I know now, but okay. at the time I did not. Okay. So at the time you're you're working the lever, but later you learn you can just twist that and they'll fall out. Correct. Okay. Now you knew the after the gun expert got it out, it was a dummy round. I 
I'm going to guess if I say yes or no on that one. So okay, I, don't I'm guess. Gonna, yeah. No, don't guess. So you weren't aware one way or another that it, whether it was a dummy or, or another type of rock? No, I mm -hmm. handed it off to our uh, evidence technician, and she was going through all the rounds to see if they were dummies or not. Okay, sir. I don't have any further questions. Were you present uh, when Deputy Orr was uh, removing the ammunition from that gun? Yes. Did the 45 caliber round come out easily? No, uh, it was uh, it was actually jammed in, in the barrel of the gun. So once uh, Deputy Orr showed me, hey, this is how you do it, we were able to take a couple rounds out and he, the round was big enough it would not eject out of the ejection port. So we actually had to manipulate the round down into the tube and then it eventually came out of the tube so it did still fit into the tube the magazine but not into the the barrel itself right does that make sense yes okay. so it was jammed in the barrel yes okay uh so even when you were there with or and you were doing it the easy way unloading it with it with, with his knowledge that round still didn't want to come out no we had to manipulate it to get it out okay thank you Nothing further. Your Honor, may I ask one more question so I don't have to recall them for this? Sure. No objection. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Sir, just one last question. Uh, you know that when you levered it, that that jammed the 45 round in the barrel? Yes. Yes. Uh, so there was, I know there was at least a round. I don't remember if there was more than that. I know there was at least a round. So when I chambered it, that round got ejected. And then that 45 round came from the tube and went to the barrel. And that's where I was, I freaked out. I thought I destroyed the, I thought I damaged the gun. Okay. But once I started trying to get it out, it wasn't even grabbing to get it out or anything. So it did jam it. So I did jam it, but the I was, I guess, assumed that all the rounds that were in it were the correct rounds. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right, you're excused. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Next witness. That was quick. <laughs> I like that. Let's keep it moving. Because, God damn it, they wasted, like, literally half the time of the trial just on breaks and tech because they can't test their shit because it would take too much planning. It would be too much trouble. Again, I speak from experience. That's the mentality out here. It's very diseased. It's very sick. It's the reason I'm leaving. You can't fix things that are broken. I do not know who this is. Do you swear or affirm under penalty? Pay attention. Somebody given this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, right. Yes, right. Seat, to the You're not nervous. Everybody here is nervous. It's so funny. Go ahead and state your name, sir. Uh, my name is Ryan Litzinger. Ryan, I'm sorry. I thought it was Brian. I apologize. That's okay. Um, Mr. Litzinger, how are you currently employed? I am employed uh, as a videographer and editor with a production company in Albuquerque. And tell us about that production company in Albuquerque. What do you do? Um, so we are, you know, we outfit productions with um, crew, camera, lighting, uh, sound, um, DPs. Uh, What's a DP? A director of photography. Um, and we we're also a rental house, so we also rent equipment. Um, um, d did you, uh, I'm sorry. Crewing, crewing as well. So like staffing different productions. Okay, you you help provide crew members. Yes. Okay. To different productions, and you know, like I said, also a rental house. Okay. Um, at any point in time, do, were you asked to do any work on the set of Rust? Yes. What what work were you asked to do? Um. So, uh, we were asked to uh, we were contracted to do uh, duties of an EPK, which is a um, Stands for electronic press kit, which is something that a lot of uh, a lot of productions have. Give, give us more information. We, we we don't know what an EPK is or why. Okay, so basically, there are days that are, you know, um, reserved for behind the scenes, 
and uh, there's also days that are reserved for cast interviews and that together makes an EPK and what the production company will do with that is up to them. Okay, so specifically, what did you do on this film? And if you can tell us what dates you did it. So October 13th, 2021 and October 15th, 2021, um, we shot behind the scenes footage and also captured um, production audio okay. at, together. And we also um, conducted cast interviews. Okay, and in terms of the, I'm not so interested in, in the interviews, but in terms of the uh, behind the scenes footage, what are, describe to us, what are you filming and why? Are you just filming? <clears throat> so a lot of the time we try to get just the action um, in between, you know, in between action and cut is when a lot of times, you know, you'll see uh, directors um, planning what they want to do next, um, talking to the actors, um, wardrobe changes, audio, you know, tweaks, anything like that. And that's really important for, you know, people that are interested in watching the making of or, you know, whoever kind of gets this footage, you know what I mean? That's interesting to them. So. Um, yeah, that's that's what happens on behind the scenes. We, we try to focus on you know uh, the, you know the DP, the director of photography, um, the director, um, and yeah, the actors. I mean, that that's a lot of what we do. So you're not actually filming clips for the movie. You are filming the actors and the crew working on the movie set. Yes. Um, sometimes you know that's. Yes, a majority of what we do is we film the actors and the crew on set working and doing their jobs. Um, but sometimes we're uh, at a place called Video Village, uh, which is basically a setup um, where, you know, people watch the scene that's being filmed. And um, we will sometimes shoot that. So it's just video mm -hmm. of the actual movie being filmed. Sometimes we'll be there. Understood. But even when you're filming in Video Village, you're filming people working. Yes, they're working as well, yes. You're showing the director of photography looking at the monitor and, and seeing what is being filmed. Yes. Okay, yes, yes. understood. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that some of this will make more sense a little later on. Um, uh, go ahead, sir. Oh, no, I was going to say if I'm not. Uh, no, 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 you're, it, it's fine. Okay. I, um, just for people who aren't familiar with, with, with what you do, because I'm not going to show the videos today. We're going to show them later in the trial. Um, did, I, did, did I subpoena videos from you? Yes. And did you provide me all of the videos that you made on the set of Rust? Yes. And recently, did I send some of them back to you for you to review? Yes. How many videos did I send back to you for you to review? I counted 17. Do you recall approximately how many videos you sent me in response to my subpoena? Um, I do not. Can you estimate? Can you give us an estimate? Uh, it could be, it could be over a hundred. Okay. I mean, it could be. Yeah. I, I would have to, you know, I don't recall, I didn't count, but. It's okay. It could be over a hundred. Okay. Um, I'm happy with your answer, but if I can show you what you sent me. Oh, you do you have a number? Uh, I don't have the number, but I have all your files. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. If you'll just give me a moment to switch gears here. I'd actually like to know actually what the real number is. No problem. May I approach? You want to, you can just approach it. Okay. 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 I can't see anything without my glasses. Please. 
does this vial look familiar? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, yeah. And then hold. That's about five. Did seeing the electronic files that you provided me refresh your memory? Uh, yeah, I mean, just about you know how many, how much yeah. there, content there was. How many was videos? Day. How many videos did you give me? One hundred twenty-six. Okay, thank you. Um, and the seventeen videos that I sent back to you for you to review. Um, do you recognize those videos when you looked at them? Yes. And are those the videos that you filmed? Yes. And those specific 17 videos, what day did you film those videos? That was uh, October 13th, 21, 2021. Thank you. So what I would like to do at this point in time is I would like to move for the admission of all videos from production outfitters uh, that the court uh, deems relevant and admissible as we move through the trial. No objection. All right, these will be of the 17. Minor of the 17, I think the defense does have some that oh, they okay. are intending to admit also. Sorry. Okay. So this um, is kind of a joint foundation. Yes, yes, per stipulation, we'll do it this way and um, I will so admit. Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, I pass the witness. Oh, sorry, Ryan. Not so fast. <laughs> First time here, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for being with us. I don't have any questions for you. Okay. Uh, you mentioned Video Village. How how exactly does that work? What is that? Uh, that's a that's an external uh, monitor that is separate from the cameras that are being used by the uh, film crew. It's separate, so that they can they can watch that. The director and the director of photography can watch what's happening separately. Okay, and are, are you generally familiar with you know, film sets and things like Video Village and whatnot? I see I see quite a few of them. I mean, All right, when that kind of system goes down, uh, how do how do people have to adapt on set? When when a system like Video Village will go down? Uh huh. I haven't seen it go down, but I would imagine that they would probably... Hang on, just, I'm going to object because I think it's speculative <coughs> at this point, but I also think that there are going to be plenty of witnesses who can talk about what they did in fact when it went down. That's fine. All right, thank you. Uh, did you witness any film, any scenes actually being shot when you were on set? Yes. Uh, did the scenes involve Mr. Baldwin? Yes. All right. Uh, did he seem to be in command of those scenes? Objection. Foundation. Judge, he said he saw it. Okay. Overruled. Okay. Well, the one that sticks out, he wouldn't have been in command because um, I think that it seemed that he was uh, on a horse and he was playing dead. So it wasn't really much of a... Okay. And what, what I'm talking about more so is, you know, in insofar as the pace of filming mm -hmm. and things like that, did he seem to have an influence on that? Sorry?
It was good coffee break time. If you're over 50, you don't wanna use traditional makeup. As we age, our skin tends to lose moisture and we all get long. Maybe don't talk. <laughs> Sorry. In the sort of the various uh, scenes that you saw Mr. Baldwin in, did he seem to be in control of how the scene was actually being shot and how quickly he was asking other people to work? Like I said, that so you know, there a short amount of time. What? Uh, I don't, oh, did you make any edits to the videos that you sent Ms. Morrissey via subpoena? No, there was no edits to the videos. All right, thanks. Nothing further. Can you redirect? Uh, just quickly. Mr. Litzinger, you expressed that you have some familiarity with the monitors in Video Village. Yes. Yeah. And you filmed, uh, inside Video Village on the set of Rust, didn't you? Yes. So let me ask you this. The monitor that the director of photography is looking at in Video Village. Yeah. Are they only looking at what the camera is recording? They can see multiple cameras. Right, but they can, can they see anything that is not being recorded by a camera? Yes. How? Like I said, the other the, some of those monitors are attached to other cameras. But if the cameras aren't rolling, how are they able to see through the monitor? That's uh, that's a specific question to what kind of monitors they are. Okay, that's beyond your knowledge in terms of what they had on on this movie set. I mean, yeah, I don't know what no kind problem. of we're using. No problem. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to somebody yeah. else about it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate yeah. your time. Uh, your excuse. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, the next witness is, uh, should we take a early lunch break or should we keep going? I think the next witness isn't going to take very long, so if we can get okay, sure. him done and yes. then we'll go to lunch. Bye. Um, Jason Hawks. Okay. Is of state. course, we have to have another fucking break. We've only worked for two hours less. 48 minutes minus the 33 minute break. That's the fucking lazy shit attitude you get out here. Baldwin's gonna have a cakewalk. His attorneys are going to kill these people. I can't wait to see that. I can't wait to see them get their ass handed to them. Do you swear or affirm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, have a seat. Talk to the mic. Thank you. Hurry up. We want to go on break. Sir, please state your name for the record. Jason Hawks. How are you currently employed? 
Uh, I own a company that analyzes device extractions and cell phone records for attorneys. Lucky you. Uh, Mr. Hawks, can you give uh, the ladies and gentlemen of the jury some information about your uh, background and training? No, such a dumb joke, assume, bitch. You just insulted I his career. In law enforcement in 2005 Stupid bitch. With the Alameda County Sheriff's Office. I remained there until 2017, with the last about seven years being assigned to investigations. Uh, after leaving the Sheriff's Office, I went to the District Attorney's Office where I was an investigator for the DA. Um, I was there for three years and then I started this company. Uh, specific to device extractions, I've attended classes from Cellbrite, which is a company that extracts information from a handset. I've, uh, I'm a certified operator, certified physical analyst, and I've recently taken the um, advanced smartphone analysis. How did you become involved in this case? I was contacted by the prosecutor's office, I believe it was about a year ago, in March, late March, I believe, 23. And were you asked to perform any work? I was. Unlike let me, you. Let me back up for a second. Um, have you been, I apologize. Yes, more disarray. Have you been qualified as an expert witness in cell, in cell phone records and device analysis? I have. And how many times have you been qualified as an expert in those areas? Uh, between records from the carrier and records from the handset, I've been qualified 53 times in five states. He Do looks like a fucking analyst. Uh, let's see, Texas, Louisiana, Michigan, Georgia, Arizona, I'm sorry, six states, in California. Okay. And now he has rabbit in teeth. Mexico. Now I'm in New Mexico. Um, Great. I would ask the court to recognize uh, Mr. Hawks as an expert in cell phone records and device analysis. No objection. All right, so you're still recognized. Now you get to add New Mexico to your list. Um, yeah, great. <laughs> Real Hawks, honor. Can you explain to the jury uh, kind of what what kind of technology uh, you're using and, and kind of how how the cell phone records interface with uh, the software, the extraction software. Yeah, explain to these people uh, sure, what so Our phones are essentially a bunch of databases that are stored. So programs like Cellbrite go in and they extract the information from the handset. And they do it in a way that doesn't change the nature of the artifact. So if I, I receive- He looks like divine, oh my God. Uh, it doesn't change- He looks like divine. Stats. So at first, all of the information is removed from the handset, and, and then it's parsed through Physical Analyzer is the name of the program. Uh, it's like a synthesizer. The information is essentially put back together, and it's converted to whatever time zone it needs to be converted to. In this particular case, um, what kind of work did you perform? Um, I reviewed the Celebrite extraction of Ms. Gutierrez Reed's, um, her iPhone. Is when, when you do, when an extraction is done, does everything on the phone get kind of downloaded? Unfortunately, not everything. So not all of the information is always recovered, but things like text messages, phone calls, images, uh, things like that it are downloaded from the handset. And when you took the, you, you received the raw data from the extraction that was done of Ms. Gutierrez's phone, is that right? Yes. Uh, so just to be clear, you yourself did not perform the extraction. That's correct. Uh, do you know who performed the extraction, not the person's name, but the agency? Uh, the, regional, the Regional Computer Forensics Lab in, here in New Mexico. Uh, so how did, how did that data come to you? Uh, it came to me on an external hard drive. And when you received that data, uh, what did you do in order to conduct an analysis? So I opened the data in the Physical Analyzer program 
which essentially takes the extracted data and runs it through the most current version of the program. Uh, and with that, it breaks out the data into various different categories. Okay. Uh, and what kind of categories? Uh, everything from, from cell sites that the phone might have seen, images, uh, videos, audio files, notes, text messages, iMessages, voice logs. There's a lot of, most of the data that we see on our phones is accessible to the program. Says Divine. And were you able to separate out information related to uh, this particular device that identifies this device? Yes. I'm going to show you what I am marking as States Exhibit 92. I'm going to say no to the blue and the khaki that Martina is wearing, not her real name. Do you recognize that? I do. What is that? This is the device information that was uh, captured by the Cellbrite program for the phone. Uh, how, do, how do we know that this is Hannah Gutierrez's phone? Um, well, I mean, I received the, I received the uh, extraction of the phone. There's some information on here, such as like the phone number, an email address, things like that, that would suggest that it is. Okay. Uh, the phone number's on there? Yes. Permission to publish? Yes. Let's just kind of look at a, a, a couple of things here. I know. And her hair's fucking weird, you know? Like, stop putting so um, much product in your hair, hair, girl. Oh, I'm sorry. Does this tell you what kind of phone it was? It does. What kind of phone was it? Uh, so on number six, you can see where it says uh, detected model. It says iPhone, and then in parentheses, it says D as in David, 54, P as in Paul, A as in Adam, P as in Paul. That's the um, iPhone code for an iPhone 12 Pro Max. Nice okay. biblical names. I'm sorry. Does Not. Does this monitor usually come on? Because I can't see. That would be great if, if I can see it on the monitor in front of me so I don't have to walk back and forth. My eyesight isn't good enough to see what's up there. Thank you, sir. Uh, does it provide the date and time of the extraction? Um, the date and time of the extraction is actually on, on a different a different part of the extraction. What's the what, what's in the number two column? That is the or date. Row, rather. I'm sorry. That is the um, that's the date and time that the phone was displaying at the time of when it was extracted in UTC. Okay. Uh, so, what is your understanding about uh, the date? Uh, of his hair. The time. The date of the extraction that it was the extraction occurred on December 8th of 2021. And is there an Apple ID associated with this phone? There is. What's that? So that is number 22 under Apple ID where it says Hannah me mail at gmail.com. And thanks for sharing that information. What is the phone number associated with this phone? 
the phone number is in on line number 24, which is 928-444-3555. Somebody's What's getting doxxed. I'm sure she shut it all down, though. Uh, um, the, the name that would appear on, say, a Bluetooth device is found on line uh, 32, which is uh, Gorilla Grip Pussy Pal. Okay. And the gray handle, you, baby. Um, Girly grip, grip, pussy pal, baby. Request, Holy shit. Did you separate out uh, some contact information for one of the people in the contacts of this phone? Yes. I'm going to show you what I'm marking as States Exhibit 93. May I approach? <clears throat> I repeat, they just said with a straight face that is Gorilla Grip Pussy Pal. <laughs> yes. Sir, do you recognize States Exhibit 93? I mean, I don't know if it's going to be as fun uh, as the depth trial. This is the, the we'll uh, see. It's getting there. information for a contact stored as Dad Kula. Dad what? Kula? Say what? <laughs> His hair. Everybody's hair. Stop using so much product. You know you don't use that on a daily basis. You guys look like slobs on a daily. Hey, I'm not one to talk. But Hannah, lose the cat eye. Somebody get her the memo. It doesn't make her look young and cute. Generally speaking, what information does this sheet have uh, with regard to the contact dad Kula? And if you could spell that for us. Uh, yes, sure. please. D A D C U L A exclamation point. Uh, so what it has <laughs> is information about that person's contact info. Their, <laughs> what's that phone number? Their telephone number. Uh, what was added as contact? That sort of thing. Oh, God. What's the phone number for Dad Kula? Uh, the phone number is 323-365-2189. All right, thank you. Thank you. At my request, did you sort of pull out uh, text messages on from the date of October 20th, 2021? I did. I'm going to show you what I'm marking as States Exhibit 94. And there are three pages to this exhibit. Do you recognize that? I do. What are we looking at there? We are looking at a text thread between the um, 928 number I already referenced and a 505 number. So you may publish. Um, when we're 
So when we're seeing this text message here that's on the screen, is who is this a is this a text message from that phone or to that phone? It is a text message from the 928 number to the 505 number. Okay, and can you read it for us? The content? Yes. Yes, it's uh, LOL. I don't need that tonight anyways. Right on, I might go smoke in the jacuzzi soon, but maybe not, I'm so pooped. Okay, and I'm gonna show you the second page of exhibit 94. And is that a text to or from Ms. Gutierrez's phone? It is from her phone. And it is to the 505 number? Correct. And if, if you can, and, and what's, what's the date? Uh, the date is October 20th, 2021 at 7.48 and 46 seconds uh, p.m. local time. Okay. And uh, can you read that for us? It says, headed down to get high out back, colon B. Okay. I'm going to show you the third page of Exhibit 94. And what's in the blue? Uh, so the blue is an incoming message from that 505 number to her phone. And just for context, what, what does that message say? Uh, that message says, time to eat now, how the blaze says go. And then is there a, res and what time, what time was that message sent? Uh, so that message was received by the phone at 8.24 and 46 seconds p.m. in red at 8.25 and 47 seconds. Okay. Uh, and so what your, this is the time that it was received? Correct. And this is the time it was read? Correct. And uh, then is, is there a response to that text that we're looking at here in green? There is. And, and uh, what time is that sent? Uh, that is sent at 8 25 and 53 seconds. And this is from Ms. Gutierrez's phone to the 505 number? Yes. And, and what, is, what does that text message say? It says, I'm still smoking. Okay, thank you. Uh, did you sort of separate out for me uh, a short thread uh, between Ms. Gutierrez's phone and the Dad Kula contact. Yes. I'm going to show you what I'm marking as States Exhibit 95. States Exhibit 95 is a two-page exhibit. May I approach? Yes. Mr. Hawks, do you recognize that? I do. What is that? Uh, these are messages that were exchanged between the 928 number and the Dad Kula contact on November 8th of 2021. Approximately what time? Uh, it starts at 408 and 36 seconds and it ends at 536. I'm sorry, 524 uh, and 38 seconds. Exhibit 95 and ask permission to publish. No objection. All right, states 95. If you're tired of wearing bralettes that just fall apart, watch till the end. The Silhouette Bra from Honey Love doesn't have an underwire, but it still gives me a lift and honestly a more natural shape. And this gives me the feeling and the look of a regular bra with the comfort and the smoothness of just a regular bralette. It is so comfortable. I feel lifted, supported, and it moves with my body. Are from the 928 number, and any messages in blue are from an outside number. Okay, and can everybody read that? 
That way I don't have to have Mr. Hawks read it. Um, and then uh, I'm going to show you the second page, if everybody's had a moment to read that. I'll show you the second page. Um, and in the second page, What are we looking at here? Uh, so the the top blue box is the response from the previous message that says will do. Uh, and then beneath that is an image that was sent to her phone from the outside number. What are we looking at there? Uh, we're looking at a thumbnail of the image that was sent to her phone. So the image name is img underscore 0686 heic and we're looking at the inset thumbnail. And were you able to collect that actual photo for me so we don't have to look at a thumbnail? Yes. Thank you. We'll get there in a minute. At my request, did you separate a text thread between Ms. Gutierrez, the Dad Kula contact, and a contact by the name of Jason Bowles? Yes. Jason Bowles is the attorney for Hannah, otherwise known as Pitbull. Take your chopsticks out, Hannah. And beauty, you're looking great today. Thank you for representing. I don't know what to call this co-attorney on the defense side. We need a name for him, though. And I haven't seen Fancy today. I don't know what they did to him. He had the wave in his hair yesterday. And he was also very um, disimpassioned. It's basically like he was a cyborg. There's Devon. And Mr. Hawks, do you recognize that? I do. And what is that? This is part of the text message thread that you were just referencing. And what's the date of that text exchange? Uh, what is in front of me here starts on December 1st, 2021. And ends also December 1st, 2021. Okay, give me of States Exhibit 96 and permission to publish. No objections. States 96 is admitted. You may publish. Can you just briefly explain what we're looking at here? Uh, sure. So the top blue box is a message from the Dadcula contact to Ms. Gutierrez's phone. And the second blue box is an incoming message from Mr. Bowles number to Ms. Gutierrez's phone. So were the, was this a... Your Honor, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure.
Why are they all wearing the same color suit? That's scary. That's scary. You know, if Hannah had checked the gun and taken that time, like she did her makeup and her hair and shit, we wouldn't be here. I love the judge's scarf, though. Uh, She's representing. Let me back up for just a moment. Look at Divine. This is when he's How a man, of course. How many people were involved in this uh, text conversation? So the Cellbrite program will pull out text threads. So if if um, you and I have a text thread, and you and I and another person have a text thread, those are two separate threads in my phone. So what we're looking at here is a thread that was between these three people. Okay. Um, this is not a thread that was only between Ms. Gutierrez and Mr. Bowles. Correct. Okay, thank you. Has everybody had an opportunity to read that? We would like to see that, please, again. Let me show you the second page of State's Exhibit 96. And... Mr. Hawks, can you tell me what we're looking at here? Yeah, we're, we're looking at a continuation of that same text thread. So the top blue box is an incoming message from the contact from Mr. Bowles. Uh, the green box beneath that is an outgoing message to both because it's a group thread. Uh, and then the bottom blue box is an incoming message from the dad Cuba contact. Okay. Everybody have an opportunity to read those i know they're pretty short and at this point they may not make much sense but we're getting there read them out loud i'm going to show you one of the very famous videos it is incredibly hard for the public to see that I'm going to show you page three. Read them. They're short. I'm telling you, they will go out of their way to not be forthcoming about anything. They're going to make everything, getting information out, very challenging working with the state. I know, again, from personal experience, I'm not just making that up. It's a very tired, tired MO. And it denies people of justice. Figure it out, motherfuckers. Everything. I hope the world tears 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 New Mexico apart this weekend. Have not had the opportunity yet to go in depth on the news but i am going to do that and see what folks are saying about this clown show i know i can't be the only one i know from personal experience that's why i can call them like i see them more waiting and then of course lunch and so during lunch we'll we'll go ahead and, and finish that concert joy division live at the apollo theater in manchester uk 10 27 and 28 of 79 anyway yeah more waiting yeah Okay, There's Fancy. Oh, God. Please don't talk among yourselves or anyone else.
else about the evidence received here in court. Okay? And um, thank you. We'll be back at uh, the... What, what do you all want? Uh, Take two hours. 40 or what? 12, 1 o'clock? What do you want? Uh, it's 1 o'clock. Okay. 1 o'clock. Okay. I swear right. to God that's why this state is at the bottom of every list. Do you understand this? I ran a nonprofit for 20 fucking years and tried to affect change. I was running against the wind, bashing my head against a wall, whatever you want to fucking say. Because people have to put their will behind what you do and there is no will to improve, to be literate, to be competent. Oh, it's gross. Let's just take two hours for lunch. Just... Phone it in. Let's just do everything as quick okay. and half assed uh, as we can. Because he's, uh, Let's do it. Still testifying. Please don't talk with any other witnesses. Er, yes, okay. And we can't finish because uh, that would just take uh, too much so effort. Also, we'll be back at 10 of and um, just in case there's anything to address. Okay. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and finish the concert. And it's got um, mm, 10, 15 left and then we'll switch over to another concert and fill that time yeah lots of breaks folks working hard see ya Pattern, this pattern will allow you to play great guitar solos every single
I never thought as a pediatrician that I would be at all useful in a war. My name is Seema Jelani. I recently...
I'm in the midst of applying for residency right now, wish me luck, Grammarly has again been a lifesaver with my application in helping me write my personal statement and CV. Grammarly is your digital writing assistant. It's an all-in-one tool that improves your productivity, triple checks your work, and saves you time when working on multiple assignments. Even the free features are incredible. You can set your own writing goals, track your word counts, and even find new words to replace your overused ones using the synonym feature. I personally love using Grammarly. Squarespace's creative tools let you design a unique, engaging website that fits your personal style and professional needs. Start your free website trial. Cancel my subscription to the resurrection Send my credentials to the house of detention I got some friends inside The face in the mirror won't stop The girl in the window won't drop A feast of friends alive she cried Waiting for me Before I sank into the big sleep, I want to hear, I want to hear the scream of the butterfly. Getting tired of hanging around Waiting around with our heads to the ground I hear a very gentle sound Very near yet very far, very soft yet very clear.
Come today, baby. Come today. What have they done to the earth? What have they done to our fair sister? Ravaged and plundered, ripped her and bit her. Stuck her with knives in the side of the dawn and tied her with fences and dragged her down. I hear a very gentle sound With your ear down to the ground No living being should ever eat processed food for every single meal of their life. So when the music's over When the music's over yeah. When the music's over Turn out the light Turn out the light Turn out the light
show me the way to the next whiskey bar. Oh, don't ask why. Oh, don't ask why. Show me the way to the next whiskey bar. Oh, don't ask why. Oh, don't ask why. For if we don't find the next whiskey bar.
So I had to stop the concert due to copyright bullshit. I mean, it's alive, right? And it's not monetized, but in any event, there you go. We're still on break, though. It is one o'clock. I do not expect them to start on time, but I also would be available because that's how they do. And you'll drop your guard, you'll get some coffee or some shit, and then they'll go live. So stick around. We'll be right back. I never thought as a pediatrician that I would be at all useful in a war. My name is Seema Jalal.
and I'm absolutely bothered that someone went on court TV and then took pictures of the exhibits. So, uh oh, that's so you're not on court TV. Period. So if that happens, you're out of here for the rest of the trial. She's pissed. All right, thank you. Court TV, what did you do? Right, let's call in the jury. Did we get everything straightened out? Counsel, I don't want to rush it, but did we did we get that straightened out, or do you need more time? Thank you. Okay, wait. Also on the court TV, also on, on the record, another order is that court TV is ordered to redact the phone numbers that were put up on the text messages because their phones are blowing up. And the solution, obviously, is redaction from here on out. But I'm going to say that the people that were taking pictures contributed to that. All right, thank you. Thank you. So let me know when you want to call in the jury. Oh, she got pissed, and then they're like, they're gone now. I don't know why there's always fucking drama with this state. It's so tiring. New Mexico, you're done with your drama. I don't know who took your pictures, and they shouldn't have done that, but let's just move on and punish them, whatever you got to do, and let's get moving. Come on. Yeah, the person who said on, on the chat of Court TV, yeah, we are in timeout. <laughs> oh my god. I almost think they, they're delaying on purpose. Like, I don't know, man. Maybe they weren't so clear to the person who was on the ground doing this. I've been um, working events with the state and things of that nature, and often there isn't a point person... You should always have one for each event and um, each side. And um, something must have happened in the communication channel because they don't do that so well. And I can only guess. I am not there. But I agree with this person on our chat here. Not my chat, but the Court TV chat said we're in timeout. We're in timeout, guys. There's not going to be much. I think that they're going to be able to get done today. We're going to see how this clock runs out. But when you actually go and look at the case and you look at the content, not much is going to be done today. A couple of the other witnesses were just laying some framework here that they can then build the case on. Um, so, you know, I don't know how much we're going to get done today. Then I tried to show you a cool concert because they have so many fucking breaks. And I think... Somebody who might be dropping in this stream might be reporting us because I don't think they can scan it that quick. And when you do scan for copyright, that is, you um, you just can't monetize. But they fucking cut the stream. So I don't know. I feel like anytime you do something out here, you get fucking flagged. And then there's monkey wrenches that people throw in and all kinds of stuff. And you basically have a lot of bad actors going on. So, pun intended my god so let's just hang tight i will see what i can do to keep you entertained keep myself entertained got work to do might as well cut out and be here and hang tight
And for the record, the reverb this morning was me because I like to juggle a couple of windows at one time and Grandma just forgot. That's it. Um, as for everything else, straight up. So I don't know. I also left the handles of the people up, but I deleted the phone number. I think that was Hannah's phone number. I mean, they should change them anyway, you'd think. Nevertheless. Yeah, so it seems welcome uh, that somebody took pictures of the exhibits. And yes, the phone um, numbers were released. So, All right, yes, uh, people were doxxed. I'm going to, we're going to go back through real quick uh, some of those text threads that we had on the Elmo, and we're going to have you read the content, okay? Yes. So I'm going to place uh, on the Elmo what was previously entered into evidence as State's Exhibit 96. Can you go ahead and, and just uh, read that and remind us uh, if this is a message that was sent by the phone or received by the phone? Uh, sure, so this was a message that was received by Ms. Gutierrez-Reed's phone from the dad Kila contact that says, get someone to show her a single action gun and how it works. They don't go off by themselves. And then beneath that is an incoming, incoming message from Mr. Bowles phone to Ms. Gutierrez Reed's phone that says, yes, I sent her this manual I got today also. There's Divine out of drag as a man, rest in peace. Otherwise known as Bugs. We're going to call him Bugs, though. Has less syllables than Divine. Which only has two. Can you just go ahead and read it? Explain to the jurors what you're reading, given that they've already saw it. Yes, so this is, sorry, this is Exhibit 96. The first page I've already, I've just read. The second page. And Mr. Hawks, what's the date of these conversations? Sorry, this is uh, December 1st, 2021. Uh, the second page starts with a message from Mr. Bowles. Hi, Mark Barden at Sandy Hook Promise here. When the gunman... Uh, beneath that is an outgoing message from Ms. Reed that says, yeah, honestly, that gun won't go off unless he fully cocked it. And then the final message on that page is a message from the dad Kila contact it said if someone could just show her she could see a transfer makes no difference. The final page starts with an outgoing message from Ms. Reed that says, yeah, we got some that just aren't long barreled. They are the same thing. And then finally, a uh, message from the dad Kila contact that says exactly. been marked as State's Exhibit 95, and would you go ahead and do the same thing with 95? Certainly. So 95 is from November 8th of 2021, and the first message is an outgoing message from Ms. Reed that says, hey, I need you to check out my boxes and send me some pictures of our boxes of dummies. Uh, the second page starts with an incoming text from the dad Kila contact that says will do and then beneath that is another incoming text message with a photograph and at my request did you separate that photograph did you isolate that photograph for me yes all right i'm going to show you what's been previously entered into evidence as states exhibit 69 and we're going to do this the quick and old-fashioned way 
Can you see that? Yes. Sorry for the dirty screen. Um, what, what is that? That is the image that was sent via text message, via iMessage, to Ms. Reed's phone for the dad killer contact. Thank you, sir. May I approach? I wonder if court TV is in timeout now because we couldn't see that it wasn't redacted. Mr. Hawks, or... in addition to uh, uh, doing some work on Ms. Gutierrez's cell phone extraction, did you also do some work uh, on cell phone extractions from some other folks involved in this case? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you remember their names? Uh, there is a woman named Sarah. I don't remember her last name. Okay. And um, a gentleman whose name I don't remember. But okay. I'm sure I would if you refresh my memory. Well, I'm going to leave that to uh, defense counsel, and I will pass the witness. Thank you. Mr. Bullion. Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, you mentioned you did some other extractions. Uh, does the word Dave Halls ring a bell? Yes. All right. Is that the other phone that you looked at? Correct. All right. And, Judge, if I can publish just to his screen, please. because then I can publish it if the judge uh, admits it. Okay. Here, why don't I just stand here yeah. and I'll look over your shoulder. That's perfect. Sorry. Yeah, that, that works. What are you looking at? Uh, uh, looks, you just <clears throat> what's on that screen and what's on your screen is different. We still need a name for this guy, open to ideas. He's like a co counsel for the defense. I don't mind. No, sir. All right. What are you looking at here, sir? I'm looking at the first page of a PDF of a Celebrite report um, that was done by the New Mexico RCFL. All right. Of the phone that you just asked me about. All right. And can you scroll down to the second page? I thought they knew they were yes. doxing people right. and they did so it consciously. I can't believe this? they fucked up that bad. Uh, so this is a summary of the data that is in this PDF report. It involves chats, native messages, which are, the, I, in this case, iMessages, uh, WhatsApp, emails, timeline, and then data files, which include uh, images and videos. Okay. Is there information about deleted uh, information on this device? There is. Can you tell us about that, please? So the, uh, the report indicates that there's one deleted iMessage and one deleted WhatsApp. Uh, in addition to that, there are five deleted emails and there are some deleted images, but without knowing what the images are, I don't know if they're things that he actually deleted or if they were cached images that got purged. And how many images are notated on the report as being deleted? I'm sorry. Yeah, help, help yourself. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so there's 152,237 images total, and there's 1,438 that are deleted. You can just hold on to that. 
and then uh, 3,214 videos with seven deleted. Okay. And when you're looking at a device and you see that something's been deleted, what, is, what does that actually mean? What is that telling you? It means that it was deleted and recovered. So if I delete something from my cell phone and, the, and it's overwritten or that memory is actually purged, then it's not recovered and there's just no evidence of it. So this shows that there were items that were deleted and recovered by the program. All right, and you have no way of knowing if additional things were deleted because it just wouldn't, wouldn't be extracted. You wouldn't have the information to look at. Correct. All right, and in your experience, do you know that that sometimes happens? Um, I, I know that it can happen. I mean, if it's not there, I don't know that it was there to begin with and was deleted, uh, but it certainly, it certainly can happen. Actually, I'll just leave this here with you. So if you can go to the emails page on that document. I do. Um, all right. How, there's about 20 emails uh, in Mr. Hall's extraction here. How do you know that these are actually his emails? Um, this, well, so there's incoming emails. The, the top one is an incoming email. Um, it's just to avoid what we had earlier. It's to a Gmail address. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means that that account was installed on the phone, and this is an email that was received by his phone, signed into an email address associated with him. Okay, so that physical phone has access to that email address? Yes. Okay. Um, Judge, I would move to conditionally uh, admit defendant's exhibit. Oh. So I'm over in the court TV chat and I ha I can't help but wonder if like the state didn't set up court TV by not sharing information so they'd walk into it. They should have redacted the phone numbers and all the personally identifiable information so that it wouldn't be shared. They should have given specific coordinates and instructions to court TV. Did they? Probably not. Like I said, Either it was an innocent accident, like I described before, where you just you just don't know, you were not communicated to, and you walk into something, or they were purposefully withholding the information so that somebody would make a faux pas. Either way, I'm sick of the fucking drama, New Mexico. Play it straight for once so we can trust your ass.
More waiting. You learn to become a very patient waiter when you deal with the state. It's a shame we can't have good music while we wait. Don't worry, I'll get to the bottom of sharing that and shit. Because there's a lot of waiting. You have to become a very good waiter. Music is the way to go. So I want to thank the little birdie that might be listening, tuning in. You are amazing if it's AI, which I think happened yesterday. Today is kind of quick. So either way. We'll get you some tunes up in here while you wait. This is going to be a long trial if they keep doing this stuff. It's like they don't learn, you know? That growth mentality that we're taught in business school, they do not. In education and counseling, every field has it. You have to have a growth mindset. Unless you work for the state of New Mexico. Uh, emails being deleted. Can you say with certainty that emails were deleted from Mr. Hollis's phone? We'll celebrate recovered deleted information. So yeah, so it was recovered from a deleted, it's a recovered deleted email. Okay. And the email that, actually we'll go apologies. If I could approach again. All right. Sir, I'm handing you uh, what I've marked as defendant's exhibit P. Uh, can you look at the first two pages of that document, please? Yes. All right. What, what is that? This is an iPhone 11. Is it Sarah Zachary's phone? I'm looking for the, uh, for the device name. Council approach. And I may just be able to stipulate. Well, no, I mean, you want to
Uh, the state will stipulate that what Mr. Hawks is looking at is a cell phone extraction of the witness, Sarah Zachary. Thank you. Judge Mayer, Chief Mayer. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. All right, sir, with both Mr. Hall's phone and Sarah Zachary's phone, are the dates and timestamps listed in the extraction uh, for text messages, messages and emails, are those accurate? Yes. And how do you know that? Uh, so everything in, everything in our phones in these SQLite databases is stored in UTC by default. What Cellbrite does is it converts it to whatever time zone we want it converted to. In this case, Mountain Time. Okay, so the foundational testimony you gave at length regarding my client's phone would apply with equal force to both Mr. Hall's phone and Ms. Zachary's phone? Yes, these are things that are written at the time. Okay. Uh, did you have any other uh, role in this case? Did you do any other work in this case? No, my primary role was to help the prosecutor uh, sort of sift through various pictures and, and that sort of thing to make sure only images that were native to the phone came in, not cached images or things okay. that were beyond her control. You mentioned uh, on direct exam that there are some things that you don't get in a extraction. Uh, would one of those things be uh, something stored on a cloud, like an iCloud? Uh, it depends. Are you referring to a document or an image? Uh, why don't you describe both? So if we have things on our iCloud, typically it can be stored also locally on the phone and on the iCloud, or uh, in the case of photographs, your phone may keep a little thumbnail that is a link to your iCloud account. So in that case, the original photo would not be on the handset. It would be on the cloud, but that thumbnail is essentially a gateway to the original image. Okay. Is if something is just on the cloud and you don't have a, a gateway, as you described, is there a way to actually go get that information? You could get it with a search warrant. Okay. Uh, did you discuss doing any kind of search warrant to retrieve uh, images or texts or video uh, from Sarah Zachary that she may have in the cloud? No. No? Uh, do you recall having a email discussion on October 12th, 2023 with uh, Ms. Morrissey about this subject? I don't. I know that Ms. Morrissey, if, if you're telling me I had one with her, then um, perhaps I did. I sent her some various subpoena language. I don't remember this um, iCloud being part of it, but if you're telling me it was there, then, then I did. Would, would looking at the email refresh your recollection? Yes. That could approach? Yes. Can I see it? Sure. This is for refreshing recollection, so you, you've seen it. You've, okay. Yeah. See if, see if you can refresh it. Yeah. Thank you. Let me know when you finish reading it, please. I see you want me to read all of it, correct? Uh, just the top one. Oh, I'm sorry. If, if it's refresh your recollection, let me know. And if not, 
you know, let me know. Uh, yeah, so this is what I was referring to as, as far as. Um, so you're going to give that back to him and he's going to ask uh, if yeah. this refreshes your memory to the question he asked you. Yeah, did that uh, refresh your memory, sir? Um, what I think I meant by that, and, and I'm not really sure, so I don't, I, I can't say with 100% certainty if I was referring to, I'm, I'm sorry, you have a, a question beyond that or it refreshes my recollection of the conversation, yes. Okay, so on Ms. Zachary's phone, uh, you were requested to get tax videos and photos from September 15th, 2021 to November 21st, 2021, and you indicated that there were some photos that were not on her phone but might be on her iCloud account. Did you have further discussion about how you might go obtain those photos? No, I think what what we're we're referring to the same thing. I I believe my recollection is is that I'm referring to the thumbnails. So, uh, if I were to download a thumbnail from a phone and you were to put it onto a television screen, it just gets blurry, as opposed to the actual full size image. That's my recollection of the full size image may be on the iCloud. If you're over fifty, you don't want to use traditional makeup. As we age, our skin tends to lose. Thank you. Thank you. Redirect. Just real quick, Mr. Hawks. Um, is it possible for a person's phone to delete things without the operator of the phone intending for that to happen? What do you mean specifically? And, and I. I it, I thought there was a discussion earlier when we were off the record um, that sometimes the phone automatically deletes certain things. That's what I'm referring to. So you're referring to cached images. Right. So when, when we go to a website or social media, our phone will capture a series of images and those images go into what's called a cache folder. And after a certain amount of time, that cache folder automatically will delete. Uh, but that's not from the person's camera roll. And it wouldn't be from their email either? Uh, email and, contents? Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm speaking about what Mr. Bullion was referencing with regard to Mr. Halls's uh, deleted data. Not to my knowledge. It, okay. It wouldn't, no. Okay, I just wanted to square that up. Thank you. I don't have anything further. Appreciate you. Your excuse? Thank you. Thank you. Next witness. And just for the record, I'm going to reserve just in case okay. we need to bring him back. <laughs> You're reserved. Don't talk to any witnesses. Yes, ma'am. Bye, Divine. I miss you. The state calls Catherine Rowe Walters. You swear affirm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, have a seat, talk into the microphone. Thank you. Go ahead and state your full name. Uh, full name, Catherine Elizabeth Walters. Thank you. And do you go by Roe? Yes, ma'am. All righty. Uh, Ms. Walters, uh, were you a, a member of the crew of the movie Rust? Yes, ma'am. And uh, what role did you have? Uh, I was the unit production manager. What does a unit production manager do? A unit production manager is the person on set who is making sure the day-to-day -day operations go smoothly. All right. Um, and are you familiar with Ms. Gutierrez? I am. Your role on set if a crew member needs something, um, you, would you maybe be the person they would go to? Yes, ma'am. Um, so I want to ask you, did Ms. Gutierrez ever specifically request from you additional training time with Mr. Baldwin? Not to me. Um, did Ms. Gutierrez request generally additional training days as an armorer from you? No, not from me. 
um, did, uh, we understand that there was a prop truck on the movie set, is that right? Yes, ma'am. During the filming of the movie, before the incident that occurred on October 21st, uh, when filming wasn't going on, so in the evenings or on the weekends, how was that prop truck secured? Uh, there's a side door on that truck and the back door, the back roll-up door, are secured by padlocks. And so that happened even prior to October 21st? Yes, ma'am. And who would lock the truck in the evening or, or for the weekend? Um, either it would be the department heads or it would be the Teamsters who were uh, maintaining the trucks. And so were they combination locks or key locks? I believe they were key locks, but I don't remember. Can you tell us who had access, who had the keys, who, who could go get in the prop truck? Uh, it would be anyone it would, it would be anyone who had the, the keys to do it. Um, the department heads were the ones that usually had keys or the combinations. Who were the department heads? Can you just give us their names? Sure. Um, so for um, for uh, props, it was Sarah Zachary. Uh, for Armory, and I believe that Sarah and Hannah shared keys. Um, the other department heads would have been uh, Sergey um, and a couple of others that I honestly don't recall, but they would have had keys to their trucks. And they have keys to the locks that lock the truck? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and did you have a key to the locks? No. Well, did Ms. Gutierrez uh, reach out to you a couple days after Ms. Hutchins' death and ask to meet you at the prop truck? Yes. And why did she want to meet you at the prop truck? Uh, she was getting ready to head back home and wanted to grab some personal effects off the truck. And were you able to provide her access to the truck? Yes. <laughs> How were you able to do that if you didn't have the keys? So after the incident occurred, we had the Teamsters pull all of the locks off the trucks and uh, had a different set of keys so that the only people who would have access were my, uh, myself and the Teamster captain were the only two people who had those access. And, and why would the Teamster have access to the truck? Um, because they were the ones, if they needed to move it for any reason, do any maintenance, any of those things. Okay. Uh, you, you have actual Teamsters that are working on the movie set that are maintaining the trucks. Yes, ma'am. And driving the trucks. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so when Ms. Gutierrez, uh, do, do you recall the date that Ms. Gutierrez asked you to meet at the prop truck? I do not. Um, do you agree that it was just a couple days after the incident? I do. Okay. Um, and do you know everything that Ms. Gutierrez took out of the prop truck? I do not. Uh, did you see any of the items that she took out of the prop truck? I saw a few things, but I don't remember exactly everything. Uh, can you just describe to us the few things that you did see her take out of the prop truck? Uh, I remember uh, a couple of gun belts, and I think I remember a couple of cardboard boxes, but nothing other than that. Okay. And uh, Ms. Gutierrez took these items from the prop truck uh, prior to the police executing a search warrant on that truck. Is that correct? Yes. All right, um, I will pass the witness. Thank you. Cross the stand. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Ma'am, uh, in, in addition to Ms. Gutierrez-Reed, <coughs> you allowed other people to get their personal effects as well, didn't you? <coughs> From the set? Yes. Yes. So after the incident, the law enforcement cleared the scene mm -hmm. and everybody thought it was clear, correct? Correct. And so you allowed multiple people to get their personal effects, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So it wasn't just Ms. Gutierrez Reed. Correct. Okay. Now, <clears throat> with regard to that set, I want to ask you, were you aware of the camera crew walking off? Yes. And they were disgruntled? Yes. When did they walk off that set? Uh, I received uh, resignation emails the night before. Okay. So this was the night before the incident, the night before the shooting, mm -hmm. and these camera crew, and how many of them walked off? Uh, my memory says six, which was the full team. So the full team, the full camera crew walked off set. So for the set next day, you have to get a new camera crew. <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay, and how did you, were you in charge of that? Uh, it was uh, a, 
a joint effort between uh, myself, my line producer, Gabrielle Pickle, and uh, our producers as well. Um, are you and Miss Pickle, do you talk, or on the set, did you talk quite a bit? Did you talk daily? Yes. Okay, so, and I don't want to get into hearsay comments, what somebody else said, but were you aware that Miss Gutierrez Reed had um, requested additional training of Mr. Baldwin? For Mr. Baldwin, no. Okay, you never had that discussion with her. No. But do you know whether Miss Pickle did? I honestly don't remember. Okay. So let's go back. You and, and a couple more people are trying to get the camera crew. Mm -hmm. Is that right? And did you get them for the next day? We did. Okay. Did you had to scramble? I mean, that night? Is that make calls that night? Yeah, I was making calls that night and very early the next morning. Um, the camera crew that walked off because they were disgruntled, did they come to the set that next morning? They did. <clears throat> Do you know what they were doing the next morning? Did you watch them or did you see them? Yeah, uh, I was with them for part of the morning. They were retrieving their own personal effects off of the camera truck. Okay. Um, did you see uh, any of them walk around to other parts of set, or, or, or were they just getting their effects? From what I remember, they were just around the truck. Okay. Um, the prop truck, <clears throat> during the day, that was not secured during the days of set. Is that correct? Uh, as far as I know, it was not secured, no. Okay. So during the day that filming goes on, and what are the hours of that um, generally? Generally, we would start anywhere between 6 and 7 a.m. and go till 7 or 8 p.m. Okay, so for approximately that 12 or 13 hour period, whatever it would be, <clears throat> that prop truck was open. As, as far as I know, yes. Okay. Um, theoretically, everybody on set could have had access to that prop truck. Theoretically. Okay. Um, now, you said that it was you and the Teamsters that would secure that truck after hours. Is that right? Uh, it would be the department heads and the Teamsters. Department heads and Teamsters. Yeah. Who was the person, the Teamster in particular, that would do that? I do not remember his name. Okay. After the shooting, do you remember who that Teamster, who that captain, I think he said, was? I would honestly have to go back through my notes. I cannot remember his name right now. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. And, and do you have your notes or? I do not. That's, that's okay. Okay. So we, you don't remember his name? I do not. Okay. <clears throat> um, did you check every night when, before you left to make sure that prop truck was locked? No. Okay. Um, now, with regard to Miss Gutierrez Reed, my understanding is that you never heard any complaints about her. I did not. Okay. And that was the entire time of the rest set? Correct. Okay. Um, that's important. Let me ask you also, after the incident, after the shooting, I understand you went into the church to approximately two days after? That sounds correct, yes. Okay, and you were going to remove media? Yes. Is that right? Were yes. you trying to assist them to remove the uh, media from the camera to see if anything had been filmed? Yes, sir. Okay, and that was with regard to filming of the actual shooting, correct? Yes, sir. And were you able to remove that? I was. Um, were you able to determine whether there was any filming? Of the incident? Yes. There was no filming of the incident that was recorded. Okay. Do you know whether um, anybody may have had access to that camera after the shooting and before you removed the media? Not to my knowledge. Okay. When you said there was no filming, are you um, familiar enough with that camera system to know whether, if they're looking through the monitor, mm -hmm. that it has to be rolling? They can look through the monitor whether it's rolling or not. Okay. So your knowledge of that camera is they can look through it without it rolling? Correct. Okay. Um, now, with regard to um, that prop truck search, you were present for that search, correct? I was. And you um, also present for that search was Seth Kenny. Yes, he was there. Okay, and do you remember why Seth Kenny there? Did he go to provide the, the code? Uh, no, I think he was there because it, uh, a lot of the firearms that were there were his. So he was there to be uh, with the sheriff's office. Uh, he was there with the sheriff's office when they arrived? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know whether he was uh, led into the prop truck? Do you recall that? I do not recall. Okay. Were you in the truck or outside when the search happened? Outside. Did you look inside the back of that truck? I did. Did you see that 
that prop cart in the truck? I do not recall. Okay. Now, if it was in the pictures, would you have any idea why the prop cart was in the prop truck? I am confused by your question. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me ask you this way. Um, if the prop cart was in the prop truck, uh -huh. do you know who must have moved that into the prop truck? Um, I can make an assumption, but I do not know for sure yeah, who would have moved it. No, don't guess. And yeah. If you don't, if you don't know, you don't know. No. Okay. All right. You indicated you got keys to the locks for the prop truck after the incident. Yes, sir. And you said the captain the teamster had one too. Yes. Okay. Did you have the combo to that, that gun safe? No. Okay. Now, did you, you talked a little bit about Baldwin and its safety training. Did you ever observe that uh, training that, that was done with Baldwin? I saw it from a distance, but I was not close enough to hear anything. Okay. And you, were, did you observe that Baldwin was not really paying attention? His back was to me and they were up a hill. I do not know. You, so you can, you don't know that. Okay. No, sir. On the, um, on the set, after it was over for the day, mm -hmm. you're aware that Miss Gutierrez Reed, Miss Zachary, everybody had to basically clear out. They had to leave. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So at the end of the day, uh, it's fair to say they weren't accorded time to clean the prop truck because at the end of the day, they needed to go. Correct. And during the day, uh, Miss Zachary, because this set's pretty busy. Yeah. You agree with that? During the day, they're doing their prop jobs and their uh, armor job duties, th those kind of things, correct? Correct. So there's no time really to go back during the day, take a break, and go back and clean everything. And there's not at night either, is there? Not that I know of, no. Okay. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. I don't, I don't have any. Ms. Walters, I want to be clear. Between October 21st and October 27th, mm -hmm. did anyone other than Ms. Gutierrez request to get items out of the prop truck? Not to me. Not, not to my knowledge. It was only Ms. Gutierrez that you gave access to the prop truck for, between the 21st and the 27th? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, and uh, on the movie set, um, did you guys hire security guards? Uh, there was 24 hour security at the gate, but they did not walk around on set. Okay. Uh, but if someone were to try to drive in, mm -hmm. they would encounter that security guard, right? Yes, ma'am. And is this location, uh, convenient to get to? Not really. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think you indicated on cross-examination that no one complained to you about Ms. Gutierrez. Do you recall saying that? I do recall. Um, isn't it true that one of the reasons that the camera crew uh, indicated they were leaving was because of the accidental discharges from firearms on set? Your Correct. Honor, not, uh, I'm going to object on hearsay. That would be the basis for that. Well. He, I, I'm basically impeaching her uh, because she indicated. Council approach, just you two.
Ms. Walters, do you know if one of the reasons that the camera crew left was because of accidental discharges on set? They cited safety concerns, yes. Did they specifically say accidental discharges on set? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> Mr. Bowles asked you about the camera crew coming the following day to collect their belongings. Yes, ma'am. Um, and I think you indicated that they stayed at the camera truck. Mm -hmm. Is that right? To my knowledge, yes. Okay. And is the camera truck and the prop truck the same thing? No. In your experience, do people on the camera crew frequently bring their own equipment, stands, cables, stuff like that? Sometimes, yes. And did they on, on the set of Rust? Yes, they did. Is that your understanding of what they were taking? Yes. <clears throat> During the day when filming was going on, was the prop truck being overseen by a driver? A member of the Teamsters that you hired? He might not have been there all the time, but he was around, yes. Okay. And I want to just ask you a couple of quick questions about your experience. How many uh, films or productions, were, even TV is fine, um, have you been the unit production manager on? Uh, prior to this? Prior to this? Three or four. And did any of those other productions um, have an armorer? They did not. This was the first production you worked on that had an armorer? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. I don't have anything further. Um, just real briefly, I, I asked you earlier about, you were saying that that you don't remember, you couldn't see if, if Mr. Baldwin was paying attention during that training. Correct. Do you recall in your pretrial interview that you did indicate that he wasn't paying attention? I had been told he wasn't paying attention. I did not physically see it. Okay. So, um, and I don't want to get into the hearsay comment. Sure. So, but you didn't see it yourself. I did not. Okay. Uh, with regard to the uh, one last, with regard to the uh, accidental discharges, um, th were you aware that there was a discharge with special effects? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. You're excused. Thank you. Thank you. Next witness. Good morning, I'm holding up that notebook. Cut that out. And more waiting. First of all, guess what? You need to approach again. I never thought as a pediatrician that I would be at all useful in a war. 
My name is Seema Jelani. More waiting. We're going to time the waiting and do a ratio. Trial to waiting equals in excess is too much. It's not normal. Come on. I don't know if you think it's your lucky day, but we're going to break early. I think from the faces I see, it's, it's a good thing. Okay. Give me a fucking right, break, like literally. Question. This isn't so cute, man. Go back you don't make jokes out of being unprofessional. When some, these are lives at stake, somebody died. People are going to spend some time behind prison. And then come back out. Potentially. And get dismissed and give you all the, so that's not you know, cute. Don't forget we don't make was. light of that. Okay. What happened to you? Go, you're all going to go out. He's going to ask you that question. He's going to get your answer. And then he's going to give me the answer on that piece of paper. And then you all are going to come back in. Okay? Yeah. All right. Shut All right, you may be seated. Yeah, we're on break again. This is why Baldwin asked for his right to a speedy trial. I can only imagine what they've encountered already in dealing with the state. Just to get where we are today. To where his date has been set. You know, um, wow. Wow.
when we're waiting here for the jury and Haven and I are, you know, shooting the breeze, um, that it was being picked up on court TV. So, you know, people knew that I walked my dogs when I got home, you know, things like that. And, and um, so we just want to make sure we were all kind of squirmish on which, which things trigger us going on court TV. So that's why we went in the hallway. It was, we didn't mean to be secretive. We just wanted to take a breather on feeling, you know, a little, you know, uh, tight. Uh, how, how about you guys get get some some people on communicating with court tv i have a feeling they probably didn't they're trying to make it seem like they're jerk faces no i mean i just know how they are they probably did not communicate they probably fucked up and wanted to pin the tail on the donkey that's how they always do quite literally the fucking donkey Like I said, I'm glad you get to see this firsthand. Like, dealing with these people is so hard. And they're so 20th century, right? She can't handle where these mics are, all that. How to not talk about personal stuff, just to err on the side of caution, because you never know where a mic is going to be. There's that. She is in the public eye, after all. I'm sure you all are doing it as well, counsel. You're doing the same thing I'm doing, right? I'm sorry, Your Honor. You're reminding your witnesses not to watch court yes. TV? Yes. Okay. And, it, and we did mention experts, but other than that... <clears throat> no yeah. experts were included. Um, at the start, Your Honor, we talked about experts being able to watch. Oh, I didn't understand it that way. I think that we agree that our experts get to watch. Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay. They would be allowed in the courtroom. Yeah, okay, I, did, I misunderstood. So um, anyone that's not an expert witness, please do not get on court TV to watch uh, uh, what has preceded you because we invoke the exclusion rule. I hope they have meetings this weekend to get their act together for Monday. You know what I mean? How you do post-mortem. And you're like, all right, what can we improve? I, I hope they got people in PR like, get it together, guys.
Okay, Drew, so like I said, it's a lucky Friday. So um, you're getting recessed, and please don't talk among yourselves or anyone else about the evidence received here in court. Don't be looking at any news media accounts or any type of account, and anybody, you know, and TikTok or whatever. And um, don't, do, don't Google anything uh, about the the rust situation, the production or anything, or about the trial, and um, don't do any research, okay? All right. Have a very uh, rested weekend. We'll see you Monday at 8.30, okay? All right, thank you. All right. And you know where to go on Monday. Not a break, just calling it a day. Calling it a day. Well, what I'll do is I'll line up some um, uh, music that's, you know, licensed. And we'll at least have that, right? We'll at least have that. Because expect a lot of waiting. You know what I mean? Just make do. You have to. Is if you show that you're pissed or whatever, they'll do it more. Just piss you off. Okay. Don't forget to um, get those ex exhibits. Uh, what were they? K? K yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. We're in recess. Have a good weekend. Thank you. We'll see you Monday.